welcome. This is Playdate Squad Community Showcase featuring Gun Trails. Uh, and I'm here with uh, everyone who made Gun Trails, as well as some panel staff. Uh, go ahead and please introduce yourselves. Well, uh, I'll just start so we have some order. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Josh, Super Funk. Uh, I designed, uh, directed, and programmed the game. Um, yeah, and then there's Sam. Yeah, uh, so I was art director, animator, pretty much everything. Uh, if, there, if there was art involved, uh, I was the sole guy behind all of it. Um, but we're also joined by our awesome composer. Hello, uh, that's me. I'm Adam. Uh, I am the composer, uh, which means I wrote all the music. Uh, and I also did some of the sound effects. Um, not all of them. My, my friend uh, Matt did a bunch. Um, but uh, I also did some myself. Um, yeah, that's me, music guy. Yeah, if you've uh, if you've ever heard like the the logo sound for like the engine when the game comes up, like that was that was one of the sound effects Adam did. Um, oh yeah, super and super fun. Um, yeah, the uh, the logo involved kitchen knives, um, and the I think what's the the other one's the engine logo, right? Yeah, With like the yeah, yeah. Steam. Yeah, that involves Steam, yeah. Uh, some some fried ham, uh, which you know mm. all good sound designers do a little bit of that from from time to time. I'm really looking forward to hearing about that. That sounds goofy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's it's funny how we got there because I just sent him like a video of like Metal Gear Solid Three and like the mask he has on at the beginning, and I was like, oh man, it'd be cool if we had something to look like this and sounded a little like this. And Adam was like, don't worry, I have ham. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was cool. Um, is the audio coming through from the simulator right now? Um, not yeah. that I'm I hearing, can tell. I can hear a little bit. Yeah, okay. it, it's coming through. Okay, cool. I have it pretty low. If people want me to turn it up or down, just let me know. Um, cool. Uh, so did we just want to get back into the introduction, or, or where do you want to take it, Aramis? Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, go ahead and speak about the origins of the game, where you got the idea from, uh, how it all started. Yeah, yeah, and I can go in more chronological order, because this is definitely not a retake. This is a first try. Um, we've only done this once. So, yeah, so <laughs> this goes back like eight or ten years Uh I truly can't remember which number is correct, but um, there was this game, Blue Revolver, uh, that came out, um, and I will actually... So I'll pull that up. Uh, so this game, Blue Revolver, that came out, and it was really special to me, and it still is. Um, I think it's alongside games like... Uh, alongside games like... Gun Vein and uh, Cho Ren Sha, I think it's one of the best indie shmups ever made. Um, it's really, really fantastic. And it was actually made in Love 2D with Lua. And so at the time, I was like really, really into Lua. And so it kind of gave me a starting point. And Sam and I started working on a shmup. And then life kind of gets in the way. And you know, you get jobs, you move. and things happen yeah, you do like two or three iterations and then you're just like yeah we'll get to it eventually and then yeah and so that that went dormant for a while and then you like fast forward to a couple years ago i was living in tokyo for work and playing an abhorrent amount of shmups like to the degree where like at one point because you can use like your bus card in japan to pay like the arcade machine i actually like played so much dodonpachi one night I forgot I didn't have enough money on my card to get home, and so I had to walk home. <laughs> so like, so I was like playing like a lot, a lot of Dodonpachi, and I was like, man, I, I really, really need to make a shmup. And then the playdate came out right around the same time, and my friend Carl uh, was like, you, th you really need to program for this thing. Like, he's like, this is like really, really small as a CPU, and I think it'd be a fun challenge. And so like, he kind of was goading me into it because he's like, oh, I bet you can't get like max frame rate on this thing. Like, go have fun. And and so we started that 
And then uh, I'm going to pull up a window here. One sec. I'm going to pull up a window. Uh, uh, which window do I want? Uh, this one. Hold on. There it is. Cool. So I was kind of sitting in like this little Tokyo apartment, kind of like hold up for a couple months, just like figuring out if I could make Lua go fast enough, honestly, if we could make a shmup the way I wanted to make it. And to be clear, there's like a lot of different subgenres for shmups. For me, I'm really into what's called like Don Maku, which translates to like bullet curtain in literal terms, but like people call it bullet hell over here in the States. And so like I put together this test. Um and this was like really, really crude, but I like sent this over to Sam. Um and I was like, hey, oh, yeah. like I was like, hey, I think this can work. And like this is obviously like very programmer art. Um, but you know, I was like bullet patterns are working, cancels are working, and cancels are where when you defeat an enemy, the bullets that they've shot out get evaporated. This is actually how the novice mode works in Gun Trails once we added it. So it kind of reduces the pressure on a player if you have cancels in a game. Some shmups have them, some shmups don't. But this was kind of like the first test I sent over to Sam. Um, and Sam and was I super remember into a it. promise uh, from you was like, don't worry, we're going to finish this one this time. It's, it's going to be a thing. <laughs> yeah, so I, we had also like, and you know, it was mostly my fault, to be clear. We had, we had like half finished many games. So this was like, don't worry, like this, this one's going to get done for sure, which I don't, I, was, for sure. I don't know why I was sure. Yeah, I don't know why I was so <laughs> confident making that promise because I had zero history to back that up. But <laughs> so there was that. And then like right after um, I ended up finding Adam through a friend. So I had initially hit up his friend, Telebasher, who is this wonderful composer and musician. And they're actually working with me on a new Playdate project. Um, but they do a lot of kind of like live kind of instrumental music. And when I showed them kind of what I was looking at and what I was looking for in a soundtrack, they were, they were really into it, but they were like, this isn't my kind of sound. And so then they pointed me to Adam and I met Adam and then Adam sent me the first test. And then I sent that to Sam and Sam got, got started on the concept art. Um, so Sam, do you want to pull up some of the concept art to show like yeah, the can... really early stuff to kind of go from yeah, there? I can go through some of that. And for context, it definitely happened on um, the first time. But uh, me and Josh are brothers. Uh, oh, obviously, we grew up together. So we've been trying to make games for a long time because we grew up uh, playing games a lot. In between all of our sports and band stuff, uh, gaming is definitely a household thing for us. Yeah. So making yeah, a game I mean... was always like... Mom and, our mom and dad would always be like, hey, you should make a video game. We're like, yeah. I was like, I know, com I know computers. You can draw real good. We should, yeah, we should make this, a game. Uh, it's easy. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, like, birthday parties were land parties at our house, like, the whole way growing Pretty up. Pretty much, yeah. Um, if there wasn't Halo happening at the house, something was clearly wrong. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember like, distinctly, hey, I got, I was like 15 or 16. It was like a Halo 2 birthday party. And like, I think, like, the normal people that got invited didn't realize, like, I wasn't kidding when I said, like, we were just going to play Halo. And they were, like, distinctly disappointed when they thought, like, normal people, like, activities were going to be happening. I was like, no, we're playing I Halo mean, 2. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's either Halo 2 or Smash Brothers is happening. It's like, yeah, wait, yeah. you want to go outside and do things? No, 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 no. We're no, going to no, stay no. inside where it's safe. Yeah. Um, so, on screen, there should be some pretty old sketches. Like, the first iteration of the game, I think this is even the second iteration... It was probably like 2013, 2012, um, oh, so a long time ago, uh, because it was about a year or so after I graduated college. Um, so there's some like old concept art from around that time. I had just finished working at a studio called Ghostbot. Uh, if you've ever played Sly Cooper 4, uh, that was my first job in the industry. I got to do like, I was just an intern though, so I just mostly did background characters and mostly worked in Adobe Animate and other stuff like that. Um, but here's like some of the first like ship designs and stuff like that. You can already see like the character heads. Uh, that was always something I wanted to push for art because I love Star Fox 64. And while it's not a shmup, it's like it was one of my favorite games to play. I think only because I was really good at it and they looked like Muppets. So I'm like, well, this is 
this is clearly the game for me. Um, and some of the designs, even like the first boss in Gun Trails, is based on a lot of like the concepts we had for this game, where like you have like this kind of octopus. The tentacles aren't there, so they're not around anymore. But I even have some stuff down here where it's like, oh, how would I animate this? So when I got to Gun Trails and I had to animate this giant tentacled monster, I was like, why did I do this to myself? This is this is a problem. This is like creating more work for me. I'm not supposed to do that. That's the opposite of doing things. Um, so a lot of sketches and we got decently far in this. There were some like pattern designs and stuff like that. And I can pull up a video, uh, after we made that iteration. Oh no. Is there a video? This, oh God, this is going to be, this, that, no, this one, this is just animation. So Don't bad. worry. Okay. Good. Safe. <laughs> so after that iteration, we tried to do it again. And they were like, okay, we're going to make a shmup. So I did all these crazy amounts of animation. This was like three years, four years later. So I'd gotten kind of decent at animation at that point. Um, but once again, things didn't really kind of take off. So we eventually, uh, hopefully it's still showing the VLC yeah. thing. Oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah enemy designs good. and stuff like that. We were playing around with like different elements, but I wasn't really used to shmups. And that's more of Josh's thing, which is why he was like the lead game director and did like the gameplay stuff. Cause I'm like, man, I just want to make things pretty. Uh, just let me animate stuff. Uh, and that was, <laughs> it was kind of my bag uh, for most of it. But Let's go back to some of the concept art, and I can show some of the early stuff for Gun Trails. Yeah, and as, so, as Glenjamin can testify, shmup people are, like, extra particular. Uh, and so, like, that, like, the game design stuff also, like, I had, like, like hyper-rigid, like, ideas I wanted yeah. to hit on it. Um, because we're, like, even more <laughs> particular than kind of hardcore gamers are on average <laughs> yeah it's a it's kind of a unique genre and that from the outside it looks pretty simple but if everything isn't perfect down to like you know the minute speed changes people just won't play it yeah like a, a good example is like uh when a shmup gets like a port if it's an old arcade shmup or something and they don't accurately simulate the slowdown that you would experience on pcb like some players will be like, oh, it's trash. I'm not going to touch it. And you're just like, it's like that level of kind of critique <laughs> from the shmup <laughs> community. So it's, it's, you have to almost respect like their rigidity to uh, some degree. <laughs> so the app that I'm using is called Pure Ref. You can either pay for it or I believe it's free. Uh, this is the main thing I've been using since I worked at uh, Coin Crew. Uh, they released a game called Escape Academy. Uh, I don't know, it was like live, it was like a year or two ago. And my art director, Michelle, was like, there's this great program called Pure Ref. I'm like, what do you mean? And you can just pull stuff and put it on this giant board and it saves it in a nice file. It's my favorite thing for reference. Um, because usually you can just grab things off the internet and drag and drop it. Whereas if you've ever worked on art or a game and you're like, oh, I want this cool piece of art, trying to use the Windows copy paste is a, is a nightmare. Suboptimal um, experience. It's a very suboptimal experience. The the pasteboard often fails many times, but I'm a big believer in working really rough. Uh, so my sketches are usually incoherent, and they're just like, all right, let's let's get the idea out. Let's do a doodle. Some of this stuff is just like, oh, what is the logo eventually going to look like? Um, and some of them are like pattern designs where it's like, ah, maybe this is like just a breakdown of like a HUD or like this is a sketch of the water level because it's like, uh, what's this going to look like? I'd never done pixel art before either. So a lot of this was completely brand new. Josh just kind of came to me as like, all right, so we're going to make a game. I'm like, we're going to make a game. All right, well, I'll make the artwork. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. But the pixel art stuff... Um, was kind of another thing. So the first thing that we did, Josh kind of came to me. He's like, okay, I'm thinking I want to do something steampunk-ish. So like Treasure Planet vibes, which is a big uh, inspiration. Kind of some Megas XLR, like, you know, futuristic robots and stuff. So he gave me like a brief description of like the pilot. So I did some quick thumbnails. I don't know where this project's going to go at this point. So I'm just like, eh, we'll see. Um, I just start doing some really rough sketches because I just don't know how that stuff is going to translate. Uh, Blue Revolver, which was also a big inspiration. Josh showed me a lot of that, so I looked at a lot of art for there, um, pulled out my art books, and a lot of it was just kind of iterating and testing on the ship design, because one thing that we found, and Josh kind of brought up a bunch, was 
<laughs> Clarity was really hard on this device. So we have multiple iterations of this ship. Um, I'm not sure what the order is, but all of these are like multiple yeah. times. Like this is even the first ship too. The first ship's somewhere else in some kind of uh yeah, this is thing. this is something Glenn as our kind of local shmup correspondent can attest to is like and it might be special to Don Maku bullet health style games, but your hitbox is usually clearly outlined and displayed within the character sprite in in bullet hell games and so like that was that was kind of like a design thing i had to like translate sam for because it was like for normal people like looking on the outside it's a really reasonable assumption to say like well why wouldn't my hitbox just be like you know the whole sprite the whole I, like yeah. why wouldn't i do that and it's just like another peculiarity of like how we like games in kind of the bullet hell world that's not necessarily like intuitive to people outside. The nice thing is like when you mention hitbox is like I've played fighting games. I played a lot of Marvel's Capcom three. I'm like, okay, I at least understand the concept of what this yeah, is. Yeah. Um, also, I, I hear a lot. People love to say like, oh, like bullet hell hitboxes don't make sense. Why would it be in the center? <laughs> and what I would say to that, game. No, 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 what I would say to that is this. If you think about it in three dimensions, if the wings yeah. are flat and the pilots like a little bubble in the middle, the the hitbox actually makes perfect sense, and it's the more logical choice because over oh, the yeah. wings, the bullets are just flying over it. So to the the physics deniers out there for bullet hells, it makes sense. I thought about it. <laughs> hey, it, it works in my logic too. Um, and so we just really started off with some like simple sketches of like because we really didn't know what we were gonna do. We're like, all right, let's let's try and keep it scope because before, like Josh mentioned, we try and scope it too big. And we wouldn't really know how to tackle it because neither of us had done enough like in our industries to really know how to project manage, I guess, is the best way. Like we'd make a bunch of stuff, but then finding a work path for both of us going forward was also a challenge uh, when we made this game because a lot of it was trying to meld those two together. So we just started off with like, OK, let's have like a small enemy, a medium enemy and a large enemy. And I would do these sketches and I would send them over to Josh. Um, I basically went to Mega Man X and was just like, all right, the one thing I'm noticing with a lot of like shmup games is they're all kind of, you know, military spaceships. And that's not all of them. There's obviously now I've looked at the genre more and there's it's way more robust. Um, and there's some really cool stuff out there uh, with like some really unique boss designs. It's like I really want to incorporate some personality into these enemies because I know that says a non shmup player. I'd be like, ooh, that's going to make me excited. So like I based like the entire each level was based on some kind of like area, kind of like you would in Mega Man X. So like the first one is like it's all aquatic stuff. So it's like piranhas, mantis shrimp, sharks, manta ray. Um, and even if that stuff didn't translate super well, it was something that I could at least go to and be like, OK, let's let's try and design like this. And this is where this boss comes in, which is just a remix of the boss I wanted to do from the games we were going to do before, I was like, okay, I really want to do a tentacle monster just for the sole fact that it's going to be really, really hard to animate. And I like making myself miserable when making art. I love giving myself really, really difficult problems to animate. Um, and I'd there's, seen there's the actually metal... some, there's some yeah. move sets inside the octopus that didn't make it into the final game that yes. people haven't seen. Um, I think I have Sam some actually, clips to Sam, the yeah, well. yeah. If you if you have it, like, there's actually some move sets that just didn't make it in for time uh, yeah. that Sam made, um, and I, like we just didn't have enough time to program it all in. But yeah, there's there's so much animation in there. There's a lot that just didn't make it to the cutting room floor. But there was a lot of looking mm -hmm. at Metal Slug because Metal Slug by SNK is like peak pixel art. Like if I'm gonna learn from anybody, they're the ones to go for. But we basically did these sketches like within a weekend, I think, or like a couple days where it's like, I want to do like a ghost train and maybe it's going to the core, just kind of setting up the idea of like three levels and like maybe there's a pirate ship, which turns into like the goblin ship later. And then after I was like, you know what? I did this cool octopus monster. What if I made it harder and I just did a giant dragon with three heads? Because that's that's logical, right? That's that's totally what you want to do. Um I'm sure, Adam, you would see some of my art and be like, yeah, what is this guy thinking? Like, I, I, what, <laughs> when's he going to stop? Yeah, it, it literally, the, it, we can get into the technical stuff later 
too if pe- if people are interested. But definitely, yeah. like one of the challenge points near the end was uh, we literally started running out of memory, and so I would have to ask Sam, like, I was like, "Hey, man, like, I need less frames for this." And <laughs> yeah. He would have, like, the memory of a goldfish, <laughs> I swear to God, because, like, I would say that to him, and then a week later, he's like, look at this death animation, it's 85 frames long, and I'm like, bro, you're you're killing me. <laughs> like, <laughs> he needs to be, like, though, otherwise it looks bad. And it's, and it's like, it, yeah, this is sick, so, like, that that was, like, the weird conundrum I'd find myself in, like, you can't say anything bad about it, because you're like, this looks great. But also, like, you're killing me. Like, yeah. I'm running out of bites. Like, literally running <laughs> out of bites. <laughs> and yeah, it we was definitely it a push to figure it out. Too. Yeah, yeah, eventually we found a way to, like, limit the scope of them. But it was also a weird challenge because the interesting thing that you presented with this is all the animations need to be the same frame rate. And if you're an animator, you have to do all the same frames. That makes a little bit of consistency, but it also makes makes it like really difficult when you're like all right yeah. here's another problem like the idle animation the death animation the leave animation the intro animation they all have to be the same number of frames which if you work on like an animated show like you don't have to do any of that like that's not even a thing uh, yeah and but for, for the... games okay, go ahead oh sorry go ahead no no you're good uh so for like for the programmers in the room uh, what Sam's kind of pointing at is all of the kind of non-boss enemies, all of their animations are the same number of frames. And they all have the same types of animations, like an intro, an attack, a death, whatever. And the reason for that was I could then store kind of their current state in a single kind of uh, 16... I could sort in a single kind of 16-bit number where the first half represented like the enum state they were in and the second half represented which frame within the particular animation they were in so in just 16 bits we could hold all of the information and then looking up kind of the right animation frame for each object was super super fast and we could store kind of every enemy's animation state in this really tightly packed array of int 16s and so that was like kind of one of the early optimizations but it did put a constraint on the art side uh, for Sam, which was that like they all had to be the same number of frames. Yeah, it was definitely like a it was a challenge, but it was also fun because it kind of made a nice workflow for us going forward where it's like, okay, don't go too ham. I mean, obviously, we still need hams as part of the project because that was a crucial part of what we were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All hams needed to be involved. Um, But it meant that we had to scope things in a much in a much tighter way than we had in the past. And it really did help in the long run. Um, I love problem solving. It's one of my favorite things. Like art, it honestly is like 90% problem solving because eventually you get to a skill level and you're like, yeah, I know how to do everything, but do I know how to do it for this project? Can I figure out a way to make this stuff work? Uh, and right now I'm just sharing like random in process GIFs of like what this stuff looked like in certain states. We even had like a leave animation that didn't really make it for a lot of stuff. There was like a scared animation for all the enemies yeah. uh, that never made it. Um, like here's some like different background art. Like obviously this goes by really fast. And I I'd never done pixel art. I don't really know how I did it. I kind of just found a dither brush set and I was just like, yeah, sure. I know how to draw. I can figure this out. It's fine. No, no worries. Um, and yeah, just kind of kept on going and the levels got more advanced. The backgrounds were something that we definitely struggled with, though, a lot. Trying to get the clarity and make sure that things yeah. looked correct in it. That yeah. was definitely... Also, a, RIP, yeah. RIP to the loading screen. Um, yeah. <laughs> this, was the, this was the coolest God. loading screen, but it is now dead. Um, it was so good. I actually did so get I anyway. actually did get a complaint from a user that liked it and was mad about the 1.2 <laughs> update. So you truly cannot please everybody. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to like throw it up on the net and like my portfolio or something. Yeah, just so I, I told them we'll, we'll try to we'll try to web host it so they can enjoy it somewhere yeah. in GIF in GIF yeah. form at some point. Um, Ventrailsloadingscreen.com. <laughs> like we should. We should let Adam take over for a bit. We um, should, so, yeah. We so, talked so a lot. So Adam, you can talk about kind of you just leave some gift playing, Sam. Um, so yeah. like Adam <laughs> can kind of Adam can kind of talk about the intro experience, what it was like, kind of introducing meeting with us, and then how you went about kind of building the the initial set of tracks out. 
Yeah, sure. I, I can say some stuff. Um, so yeah, you had uh, alluded to it before, Josh, but um, yeah, we we met on on Twitter, uh, of of all places, and uh, yeah, you were in touch with my my friend Jan Lin, who goes by Telebasher, who makes great music, uh, and she was kind enough to pass you my way, and then we yeah just kind of went from there. Um, and it was a ton of fun. Um, you sent me, I remember you sent me a bunch of references at the start. I could probably dig through our DMs to uh, find the references you sent, but I remember Blue Revolver. Um, there were like a handful of tracks um, from from that game. Uh, but what really stuck with me as a really good reference, and I kind of ran with that, I think for most of the tracks, was, um, oh God, I'm going to butcher this, so Josh, you'll have to correctly pronounce it. Um, You're talking about Mushi Hime-sama? Yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. If if anyone in this chat hasn't played Mushihime Sama, like that's my homework for you. Everybody should play Mushihime Sama at least once. It's on Steam and on Switch. It's one of the greatest shmups ever built and one of the greatest games ever built. Okay, continue. Yeah, well, music was was awesome. Um, yeah, you sent me a few tracks from from that game, and yeah, whenever I got stuck, that was like. God, let me just see how how they did it in this game and try to get some inspiration there. I remember specifically the um like the stage clear track. Um, I don't know why. Like I was really stuck on that, and it's like not a. I'm in theory not a hard piece of music to write. It's like ten seconds and then like a little bit of a loop. But um, yeah, I just like could not get the right feel for it. Um, so I was like, all right, let me let me go see what they do in this game. And for the life of me, I could not find just, like, a single person uploading, like, hey, here's what, here's stage clear, and here's the music. Um, so I, I remember, and I had to go back to it a couple times, um, I just found, like, a long-form Let's Play, and I would, like, scroll tediously through it until they finished the stage and would get to the stage clear music, um, and then just listen to it for a while. But, uh, but yeah, that game was, was super helpful. Um... And then before getting starting on, started on anything, um, I talked to my friend um, Maxo, who had written the music for Casual Birder, um, which, incredible soundtrack, if anyone hasn't heard of it. Um, and Maxo is just great in general, super, super good composer, worth checking out for sure. Um, uh, I talked to him for a little bit just to see if he had any suggestions for like what I should keep in mind sound wise because it's a small device, pretty small speaker. Um, and what he mainly told me was like one small speaker, obviously not a lot of bass, bass is going to cut through that. So just keep that in mind. Um, and if you're not playing with headphones, it's also mono, which usually doesn't matter too much, but um when you're writing music you're usually doing it in stereo if that all gets squished into one speaker sometimes weird stuff can happen so um so what i ended up doing was kind of modeling a lot of the sounds i picked after um sort of like gba ish era stuff um so golden sun um mega man battle network that sort of stuff so it was like I love a lot of the sounds network it's so good. Um, oh, I so great. I could go on. We could change the topic <laughs> entirely, and Did I could just talk about we, Golden Sun and Battle could, Network and how many hours we sunk into them. Yes. Yeah, exactly. We could do that instead. Um, but I, re I remember going into it wasn't GameStop at the time, but it was whatever it was before that, and just walking up to the counter as a kid. I think my dad just like dropped me off, and I was like, "I have a Game Boy Advance. I need a game. What's a good game?" Uh, and the guy was like, "Mega Man Battle Network 3. I don't know why he didn't give me one or two. He just started me a three. Um, but I vividly favorite. remember it was really good. It was awesome. Yeah, I loved it. And then I went back and played two. Uh, and then I played a bunch of them. But uh, but anyway, um, a little bit of a tangent there. But uh, but yeah, I was just looking for like samples that were used in those games and uh, thinking about how they did um, sort of like bass sounds and sort of like the lower frequency regions. Um, and what I just ended up doing is making sure bass always had like a little bit of a fuzzy square wave um a doubled with anything that the bass was playing so that worst case scenario that would cut through and you could hear it um yeah that's like kind of how i approach like at least the sounds um 
And then the actual writing process, uh, it was a lot of fun. I don't know. I mean, my my process for composing, I feel, is a little um, scattered. I try not to do a lot of it at the computer. I'll usually, like, sit at my piano, like, without anything in mind and just, like, noodle around and see what comes out. Um, and if I come up with a cool chord progression and I'm like, oh, I think this could fit in gun trails, I'll, like record it to my phone and then just save a little note that's like, maybe this is a gun trail song. Uh, and then um, just play around with that. Uh, I use FL Studio, so most of uh, my composing and production happened in there. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know and if I think, you remember the yeah. initial pitch, Adam, where I was like, uh, we, we famously have this screenshot somewhere, I don't know where, but I was like, don't worry, it'll be like three songs only, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that was your initial pitch. Yeah, you're like, tell a similar way. promise as well. <laughs> Three songs, yeah. quick in and out, no big deal. Yeah, uh, and then right in, right year, out, easy, easy peasy. <laughs> yeah, and then a year and a half later, like, all right, track eleven. <laughs> you know, loading screen music. Which honestly, like at that point, I was like, this is great. Just like <laughs> keep them coming. Um, whatever you can fit. As long as you're not, you know, running out of bites, I will. I'll keep giving you tracks. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, and you gave me like a couple. Like, I don't know how much of like each stage was fully thought out when we first were started working together, Josh. But I know you gave me like some broad ideas um, and like some concepts. You sent me a bunch of Sam's art, which was super helpful. Um, and I feel like our process working together was like pretty smooth. I would send you a track and. Most of the time, you would just like it, which is great for me. I'm like, okay, awesome. Like, no revisions. Uh, and if it once in a while, you would maybe be like, oh, can it be like maybe like faster or like a little bit more intense? And like, okay, sure. But like, I feel like we just kind of settled into a groove pretty early on, um, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Me. I think yeah. it's like it was an interesting thing from my side because it was like. I'm not trying to like not be critical or like helpful with like feedback on what I want. Adam just kept sending me bangers and I was like, yeah, this is it. Uh, so <laughs> every, like I would tr really try to think of something I wanted to change. And I was just like, no, this is, yeah, this is it. This is it. That's um, great. I think I'll, I'll take yeah, it. It was great for me. Each, each one just fit together really well. And, and Adam was such a key part because, like, for me, music is, like, such a central part of how shmups feel and how they play. It was, like, I wanted to start getting tracks before I actually did stage design for, like, enemy layouts and stuff like that. Um, I Obviously, music is big in a lot of games, but shmups are such a, like, a visceral feel kind of thing. I think they might actually play, like, a bigger role than, like, in average games, for sure. So like Adam, Adam really helped kind of set the tone for like the pace and and the way the game ended up feeling, um, which is great. I appreciate that. I think one of the one of the uh, I don't know why this just sticks with me, but um, and it made me really happy. And it wasn't even for a track. I think it was like one sound effect I sent you. It was like a beep, just like a beep for something. Um, and you were like. This is the best beep I've ever heard. This is like such, <laughs> such a satisfying beep. You nailed the beep, uh, and I was like, "All right, cool. That that's that's amazing." Uh, didn't didn't take too long, but I'll I'll take I'll take the compliment where I can get it. Um, yeah, I think it, yeah. it might have been for the unpause sound. So when you unpause in Gun Trails, it gives you like a countdown. Oh um, yeah, maybe that was it. Um, a lot of times because like these games are so fast paced if you don't give someone like a quick little countdown with like the menu stuff out of the way then you know like they might just unpause and die right away and then like be upset so we needed we needed a good beep for that i pulled out my my playdate and so i could go hear the beep and it is it is a good beep it's a very satisfying beep you're like ooh yeah. Yeah. Again. Oh, yeah. And also, nice. uh, Matt Matat was our other sound effects designer. Um, they also did a wonderful job. They did the laser sounds, the explosion sounds. Most of kind of the in-game SFX was was from an initial batch from them really early on, and they did a they did a wonderful wonderful job. Yeah, yeah. Matt Matt 
Matt killed it with those. Um, and then, yeah, I think the only sounds I provided were uh, the beep, uh, which we're all big fans of. Um, and then, yeah, the logo <laughs> logo uh, sound effect and the engine. Um, you know what's so funny, which... too, about that with, like, the intro? The fact that we were both vibing on Mega Man Battle Network is hilarious because that's literally what I did for the gun trails thing. I looked at Mega Man Battle Network 2 screen. I'm like, I want to do something like that, that scrolling nice. pattern. So it's it's kind of funny that because we never talked about this when we were working on the game. So the fact that you were channeling Mega Man Battle Network and I was equally channeling it is crazy. It, it worked out. It was it was meant to be. Cool. Uh, let's see. So one thing I thought might be fun to go into, um, and Iremus, just let me know. Uh, either way is is fine. Uh, was kind of like. Just a few old like concept work in progress videos that I just have sitting around um, from like part ways through development. If you, if you want me to bring those up, I can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we should do something like that. Cool. Let me so stop I'll take over. So you can go. Over. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Um, so if I bring up, and I'll just kind of talk about like what they are. Oh yeah, this is this is good stuff. Okay, this is. All right, be prepared for some, pre- be prepared for some pretty good <laughs> art, guys. Like, I don't want anyone to get discouraged by how good this art is. I'm re- uh, so this was <laughs> me <laughs> and my test boss when I first sent Sam. I was like, so it'll look something like this. And this is what became the mid-boss. But I was like just trying to communicate like the shape and size on screen. And you can see like my lovely programmer art, <laughs> uh, which is like truly, truly horrific. Um and then uh, Sam started playing around with it, and then we got uh, we got to this, and I'll sw- switch windows. And so then this was like kind of the first. Face. This was the first test Sam sent me, and things look a little different. You can see like the side chips are a little bit bigger, um, but the big difference here is there's this like gem on the boss, and this was sadly a thing that didn't end up really staying in the game long term. Also, the turrets. Um, yeah, so you can see like these extra parts, and there was going to be this like part system for breaking off different pieces, and it was really just like it's kind of in there in terms of the code. Like there are parts of the bosses that explode at different rates, um, but like having like these actual gems and stuff on top didn't end up making it. But that's uh, that was one thing we were going to try to do um, that just didn't end up happening, issue, wasn't it? For like a lot of yeah. it, like we couldn't get it to I mean, track. It, it was very much a solvable problem. It was just like an expediency thing. Like yeah. we ended up not having like enough time to do it the way we wanted. But like, yeah, that was that was very much a solvable problem. Um, and then kind of we were looking at uh, let's see, let me see this. Yeah, okay. And so then this one is a super super early test. So basically, this is after I had sent Sam the pitch, and he gave me this really early version of the little enemies, and I was just kind of building out the core like shmup bits. Um, and so you can see this is this is back when the game was all in Lua, um, and it's using kind of the Playdates debug UI stuff to display information. Um, and this was just like the beginning of. Um, collisions and stuff like that working. And the other thing was, this was the beginning of like the coin system. So those little pieces that track onto you, that was like the the first version of the coins, which like track onto you. Um, I can't believe I had so the big enemy really already in there at that point. Yeah, so we had, really... we had the big enemy. We had, you did the big enemy and this little small guy. He, d- he didn't make it. Um, yeah, he ripped little guy. Uh, this was this initial revision. He didn't make it at all. So sorry, little guy. Um, but yeah, so this was, and we'll talk about it more in the Q&A if people are interested on the technical stuff, but this was like when the game was in Lua, and um, it's been kind of a point of discussion within like the dev community lately. Like a lot of times new devs come in and ask about like Lua or C, and like, you know, think they have to go to C to like, you know, write a game that performs well. But, like you do not, you can do a great job in Lua, you can make a great game in Lua. Um, there may be reasons to go to C, but I would say... Uh, don't be so hasty with it. You can do a lot in the Lua space. Um, we were hitting 50 FPS, no problem. Um, 
I just kind of had more I wanted to expand to. And I was more comfortable with C than I was in Lua because that's where I had done my day job stuff. Uh, but I just wanted to put that little PSA out because, you know, that, that part gets kind of talked about a lot and you can do a great job with it. Um, I actually had, uh, let's see, a couple more. I think there's still yeah. like, probably a couple videos just lingering around. It's, it's wild to actually see some of this art. I'm like, oh, yeah, so, that's why that boss looks so right. There's, the uh, there's this like work in progress menu. Oh, um, very, very early. Sam's, Sam doesn't <laughs> like it. Um, there's this, uh, let's see, this initial like block out for when we were kind of figuring out how the UI is going to work. Uh, if people are curious where like Sam actually had the idea, I guess, at the same time as I did for yeah. having like a character icon. But the funny thing is, and Glenn's going to know this for sure. The place that I got the character um, art idea from simultaneously was this great game called Radergy. Um, mm -hmm. If you haven't played Radergy, um, you should because it's great. Uh, but basically, I'll just pull up a little gameplay of it uh, and I'll switch screens. Yeah, I always wanted to do something when you talked about the HUD early on. I was like, I really wanted to have something that yeah. had a lot of character to it. And so I so Radergy, uh, Radergy had uh, like this character art right here, um, and it was like a big part of it. And when you get hit, um, they would wince in the same kind of way that the Gun Trails one would wince. The reason I don't, uh, you won't see them wince in here is because this is a super play by a player named M. Knight, who is probably currently the best strategy player in the world, so they don't miss. <laughs> but just pretend they get hit and the character winces in the top corner. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So that was definitely the inspo for that. Um, Sam, did you have other art you wanted to show? Uh, yeah, I can go over a bunch if you don't have any more videos. Oh, and I have, oh, I have one last thing on the Lua bit real quick. Yeah, um, so this was... Uh, this was like the the chat between me and Sam. Um, I'm generally kind of a terse person, so I was just like port worked. I uh, worked on it every day for like uh, a few days. It's good. And so the left hand side was like the Lua version running, which was running like at a solid stable FPS. Um, and then the right hand side it was like the initial version of the C port. And it, one thing worth noting, like in that was like. It's as apples to apples as it can be, but I was using like a very simple version of Lua, right? Like I wasn't, I wasn't using like meta, like fancy, like kind of object oriented stuff on top of their, their table system or anything like that. Like it was functions and arrays. Like that's it. Like I programmed like a grandpa in 1989. And so the translation was like pretty one-to-one. -one. Um, the big, the big difference maker was like when you went to C, you also could kind of control the size of data types. So things got a lot more compact, right? And if you were storing things in like packed arrays, you now have the choice to say, oh, I can represent this data with eight bits or 16 bits. And, you know, that just doubled the density of that particular, that particular array. So this is just a, a little look into it. There's more on a forum post on the dev forum for gun trails, if people are curious and also, just hit me up if you want to talk about it. Um, yeah. So I will pass it back to Sam for control. Yeah, I can just show some more art while we keep talking about it. Uh, yeah, and, and also if you have questions, you can just ask during the Q&A. That's fine, too. Yeah, so I mean, I think I should probably go over the back. I guess we can go over the backgrounds, too. Uh, yeah, I was going to leave that to you. Yeah, let's, let me pull that up. That should be in the document. So obviously I don't have every iteration of what this was about um, for like the backgrounds and stuff, but I can kind of zoom in on this. So there was a lot of iteration. Um, one of the funny things is that we found out by the end of the development is that Josh thought this was a sand town and I made it a water town. And that was like a funny <laughs> revelation, like after we've done it, because like there's no color. So it's just like, yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that totally yeah, that looks is, like sand. That's such a funny like thing that could really <laughs> only happen on the play date. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, um, I guess it could happen elsewhere, but it's more likely here. <laughs> and like I've done environment design. Uh, I was one of the concept people at uh, Coin Crew that worked on most of their DLC for um, 
the Escape Academy game, which came out on Steam. Um, so I actually teach right now for a university. I teach environment design, but I hadn't really done too much for like uh, personal games. Like I hadn't like built pixel art. Pixel art was a very new thing. Um, I'd done like one or two things here and there before. I understood like the idea behind it. Um, but I was also just like, yeah, that's cool. And then I would just go draw like, you know, normal. Um, and then also just on play date, like we only had one play date. Uh, so there was, even though, and Josh was living in Japan at the time and I was down in SoCal. So there wasn't like a, Hey, let me just hand this over to you and we can kind of meet up and, uh, like share it. There was kind of like this back and forth of need to make the background lighter, need to make it less complex, need to uh iterate on the lightness of it and so the first like seaport town was a lot of how do we make it small enough that it still reads but big enough that it still looks good and then also just how is it light enough that the ship and the enemies read because one thing that we ran into was even when the backgrounds looked really good you couldn't see what was happening and i didn't know because we would get a pc build and he would send it to me i'm like no it looks fine i can totally see it not realizing the screen of the playdate is like so teeny because now I have my own. So like when we make playdate games, I can kind of upload a build by Josh and we can kind of figure out how it works. Um, but even just the idea of building a background, we didn't know exactly how we we're going to go ba about it at first, or at least I didn't. Um, because like eventually we had to kind of break it into chunks and eventually it was kind of this repeatable pattern we could make. But there was a lot of like working with dithering and a lot of like using different brushes just to kind of figure out uh, what was happening. I did the game with probably about like six or eight brushes, I think. Um, and they're all really simple. They're just like the pencil tool in Photoshop with like a pixel brush. And like one has more dots and one has less dots. Uh, there really was no fancy tools for this and animating in Photoshop is kind of a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> but I, I had access to it through my teaching job. So it's just like, well, I'm I'm not gonna pay for something else. I'll just use this. It'll be fine. Um, yeah, that one that one might be interesting to people, uh, Sam, because like I think a lot of people use a sprite uh yes. in the community or gosh, I, I can't remember the other tool that's pretty popular. There's a, There's a couple like pretty popular yeah. like pixel art focus tools and uh whenever people would ask me like what you were using i was like i think he's still just using photoshop and like i felt yeah. like my answer was wrong but i guess it was right <laughs> no yeah it was it was just photoshop and i would just build them into individual parts because i would treat this in the same way that i would if i was working on Sly cooper back in the day which is you build all the parts in adobe animate it was flash back in the day and then you would kind of just make these really great pixel art and i got the idea from metal slug because i looked at the way they animated those games I was like, okay, to get that detailed pixel art, occasionally they're shifting the models to get better perspective and more 3D looking to it. But most of the time, it's just parts that are kind of shifting ever so slightly. So one of the ways that I achieved the look of this game was trying to break down and treat it in the same way that I would treat something for like a more modern game where I'm using Adobe Animate or if I'm making an animated short. Um, and yeah, I just kind of just got better and better as the game went on as art usually is um and as you can see like we eventually figured out adding like a stroke around the characters was a really great way of doing it uh in the later levels the enemies read super well um but we also didn't have time to go back and like oh let me revise the mantis shrimp or let me revise the shark like yeah that really the first, wasn't the first level had a, had a light background as opposed to the dark background so it was also like less yeah. urgent to to fix True. characters in that one but yeah i think really in the second level and in the third level which tragically like a lot of people hadn't seen before we added yeah. novice mode but <laughs> like in in those levels i thought like <laughs> the backgrounds were really good and they like the characters read really well because of the white border you did on them. Yeah. Um, it, it's there was a lot of reasons to add novice mode, and we can get into it in the Q and A if people want to talk about it. Uh, but like the big reason for me was Sam had done all this art, and I thought like people really should see it because I thought it was some of the some of the best on the platform, and it was like ironically and tragically just hidden away from people because they like couldn't get through that first level. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the fun things, too, is like just being completely uh, a little unhinged and just a little bit of like, oh, I can just kind of do whatever, which created problems occasionally. But I was really trying to make 
the best art that was on the platform. Like I really wanted to, I'm somebody that doesn't like going halfway on a project. I'm like, if I'm in on the project, like I'm, I'm, I'm all the way in, like it's going to be as good as I can possibly make it. Um, so like, there's a lot of iteration. There was a lot of watching of Saku guys, which Saku guys, I'm probably mispronouncing that because unlike Josh, I, I have not studied Japanese. I just look at anime. I'm like, Ooh, pretty. Uh, and just, um, I studied a lot of like videos on animation and just like really breaking down. Like there was a lot of times of research just going into trying to make things as best as possible and really, oh, going like, uh, just kind of just going ham with all the visuals, um, trying to figure out this is a bomb animation that never made it into the game too. Uh, the task will be in a game at some point, but not right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. like a, yeah, we, a there actually cool is stuff. Uh, you could show them that, Sam. There was a bomb for the shmuppers out there, Glenn. There was a bomb planned for gun trails. Uh, I thought it was shaking. I need to go it, to the right screen. It just didn't... Uh, it didn't end up making it. And this was really like a factor of controls more than anything else, right? Like, yeah, I, I was going to ask, because that's one of the limitations. <laughs> what button do you put it on? What button do you use? I'm <laughs> out of buttons. There's only two face buttons, Yeah. <laughs> Um, and this is why I always make the joke to Ray that I was like, oh, man, you know, there is a mic input on the play date. What if we just said, if you want a bomb, scream uh, like, like a DS game, <laughs> blow into the, like, yeah, like a weird DS game, blow into the mic, uh, dark to bomb. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and I, you know, I always thought there might be a crank based method you could do, Gov, where it's like you just wiggle the crank at all. So it's like a very like mindless input where it's like to have your crank and if it moves more than you know 15 degrees we'll count that as an input and maybe that's a way we could have games that use crank a b and d-pad at the same time but i don't know i think that's an interesting design problem for us to solve as a community like how to kind of expand the control set for sure and how to make it work maybe with like tiered systems or something yeah, that was definitely something we ran into. Like screen real estate also was a thing, like trying to figure <laughs> out to make it like feel like a traditional shmup where you have that kind of limited room. Like the HUD was definitely something we spent a lot of time on trying to iterate. Because yeah. like you mentioned, it's inspired by your stuff and my stuff. And I just knew that like I want to throw as much personality as we can, which is one thing you tried to push too, is like you didn't want to have numbers too much and I didn't either. I wanted it to be like visuals, which is why we had like the gauges on the side. Yeah. Um, kind of represent and, and, your lives and stuff. And the width of the, the width of the UI served two purposes really is like, I wanted to make a vertical game, um, but I didn't want to flip the play date on its side. And the reason for that was like, if you, um, if you look at your play date for anyone that has theirs on them, right? If you were to orient it vertically with the D-pad down, I think like you run into a problem of you can't reliably have people using the D-pad and the buttons at the same time in that orientation. Um, so then like the only real option you have for doing kind of a tate shmup is basically auto fire. And I didn't really like auto fire. I wanted people to have more precise control. Um, so that's why that never happened. And because we were orienting it normally and horizontally, then the question became, okay, how do we tighten the screen? There's this, there's this term in the shmup community called vertizontal. Um, and it's, it's where a vertically scrolling shmup is in like 16 by nine aspect ratio typically. And it's, uh, it's, let's say not beloved by the community, like myself included. Um, because a lot of times when you have a really wide shmup that's vertically scrolling, you have a lot of trouble accurately and effectively guiding the player. So one thing a lot of shmups will do with their patterns, right, is you're guiding the player left to right and kind of trying to get them to move in a particular way that suits the gameplay style. Once it's like stretched out that much, you really run into problems with that and you're, you're just not able to effectively guide them. Um, like a famous game that did this that is kind of loved by non-shmup players but hated by shmup players is called Jamestown. Um, and it's like a beautiful game, gorgeous, amazing pixel art, but it did the kind of vertizontal thing. And we were very much trying to kind of stay away from that from a design perspective. So that's how the, the UI ended up being 
That's how the yeah, sorry, Paul. <laughs> uh, that's how the UI ended up being a little bit thicker, um, which was to get us into a CRT type dimension. So Gun Trails like play screen is like three by two, I think, by dimensions. Basic or it's three hundred by two forty, whatever the dimensions of that are. And so that got us more of a tight, typical vertical shmup you would see on like a CRT in the nineties and two thousands. Yeah, and one of the funny things too that uh we eventually we originally had all of these different parts, like they were all individual. And then at a certain point you came to me and you're like, so we need everything combined on like one thing. And so for people that don't know what's happening, it's like there's a lot of different animation loops that are happening. The bars have their own animation. The bars also have their own break animation. The ship pilot has its own animation. So there's like six different states of this fully combined animation. When you first presented me the problem, like, oh my God, oh my gosh, like, what, what am I going to do? Like, my brain was just like, all right, lockdown. I think I can figure this out. And like doing it in Photoshop on top of that was just like, oh, this is a nightmare. Like, what have I done to myself? I, th I'm the one that decided to do this. I, I'm yeah. very difficult. And so this was, uh, this was back when the game was in Lua for sure. And actually, I was talking to Ray about this recently. Um, this is like one of the big bottlenecks. If you're using like the default SDK, um, is just the number of image draw calls. Um, so that was, that was kind of like the big bottleneck I was looking at at the time. And one way you can really work on getting around that whenever possible is if you have overlapping sprites that like you have ahead of time information on where they're going to be drawn, like combine them, combine them into a single image and just draw one image. <laughs> and so that was, that was kind of where this UI challenge I gave Sam to came out of was when I started profiling things like the draw UI was like really, really expensive relative to what it should be. And so then, yeah, he had to go find ways to kind of expand all that. Yeah. Cause there's like transition frames as well. Like there's like a yeah. little flash when you get hit too. It was a, it was a fun challenge. And when it was finally done, it was like, okay, cool. We don't have to touch it anymore. Um, but at the time I remember seeing the message just like, Oh no, chicken. I, cause I, <laughs> that's funny i knew exactly why it had to happen i was just like okay well i'll make it work i'll, I'll figure it yeah. out I, I don't know how but that's kind of my mantra with everything honestly whenever someone like presents a problem maybe it's from being a teacher you're just like eh i, I, I guess i'll figure it I, out yeah, that's just that's just what game development is right i think yeah. it's just problem solving um but sam did a great job i think like i threw him so many tough challenges as an artist like like particularly like one because the play date is you know as we all know there's a lot of developers in here 3d's here uh simply's here a lot of devs rays here uh we all know like it's you know a somewhat limited platform where we have to be careful about how we write things so that adds challenges on its own um other things that add challenges were like the shmup specifics of things like around readability and all that other stuff coupled with the fact that sam hadn't really done pixel art before like, you know, I think everyone should give a nice clap for Sam because, like, this game was, like, particularly, I think, difficult um, for for Sam because it was, like, just new on every level. And, like, I'm such a shmup purist. I also made it harder every single step of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, the and, like, we're too brothers, is... too, so, like, I have yeah. no problem, like, just being, like, as harsh as possible with him. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you're family, so... <laughs> we'll, we'll get over it pretty much yeah yeah um, yeah it's i mean it was a cool problem though also like it was also freeing too because i kind of got to decide the majority of the art direction every now and then you'll be like ah eh, can we shift and do something like this but yeah sure no problem um getting the dithering was probably the hardest thing to figure out at first getting shadows and getting just readability for a lot of this stuff because it always translates smaller and not having a play date to be like, oh, I can see how this looks. I'm just like kind of guessing. I'm just like, well, the yeah. animation's cool. Hopefully it looks good. For, even for people who haven't seen this, this is the non-final boss's death animation running on screen. Yeah. And I remember when I sent this to you, you're like, why is it so many frames of animations? Like, do you see the explosion? <laughs> do you see how cool it is? It has to be I think, that okay, in my defense, I think I said, <laughs> this is really cool first. 
Then I yes, said, why is there so many frames of animation? <laughs> because you, I'd send you the gifts like this, and you'd be like, that's that's amazing. And then you'd see how many frames it is, you'd be like, what have you done to me? Like, what have you done to us? Yeah. How, yeah and then, well, we this was this at the fit? time, like, the loading, yeah. like, I was oh, hearing yeah, about the loading true. times of gun trails, like, from people testing it even. And I was just like, mm-hmm. this is going to be a thing. And, like, it very much was a thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's fixed now, also, right? It's it's past yeah. tense. It's past tense. I am healed, yeah, no and I am. <laughs> I I will no longer hear comments about it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't happen anymore. It's gone. Uh, um, I mean, you could talk about that too, about how you com- compiled that stuff. Um, and Adam, also feel free to jump in like whenever you want. Like, yeah, uh, luckily any, sound like, is like sound wasn't. Want to say. Yeah, sound wasn't a huge size thing, at least. Whereas, like, it's probably, like, the biggest parts of our game, like, in terms of the on-disk space, but for the in-memory space, like, when it's running. uh, We kind of let Adam just, like, go crazy. But I was always surprised, like, I'm not a music person, so I guess I just don't know how big files are supposed to be, but Adam would send me a song, and it was, like, 40 megs, and I was like, oh, people are gonna get so mad at me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it it didn't seem to be an issue, except I know... Although I think it's fixed now. I know one of the yeah. tracks didn't make the cut originally. Yeah, this was that was because like we were near the initial launch. We were so close. We were so close to the the size limit for like in-game memory. Um I was at one point I couldn't actually afford to have a separate file player open for the additional track. Yeah. Yeah. So for a little while, also, that was a soundtrack exclusive, which was like, for me, that was just marketing. It was like, hey, you get a you get a new song if you buy the album on Bandcamp. Uh, but also, maybe <laughs> buy the album because it's pretty hard to listen to the other tracks that are past level one if you haven't gotten that far yet. Actually, like, yes, uh, anyone here, uh, Adam, if you can drop a link in the chat, please support Adam on on Bandcamp. Oh, um, it's the best way to support yeah. artists. And I think Gun Trails soundtrack is just, you know, a good thing to listen to throughout your day. I use it during workouts now, uh, and it's it's a great time. Oh, nice! It's I'm super... glad to hear that. I asked. I actually asked my partner the other day. I was like, "Is this like, is this like narcissistic or bad to be listening to like my own game soundtrack?" <laughs> and she was like, <laughs> "She was like, no, Adam wrote it. It's okay. You're listening to Adam's yeah. soundtrack." I'm like, "Yeah, you're right. This is okay." I mean, <laughs> is it is it even worse if I say like I also listen to it myself, even though like I have heard it a bajillion times already and I wrote it myself? No, I think because it's, I, I think do. It's healthy. You're appreciating uh, the art that you made. I think uh, I think 3D was trying to say something. Go ahead, 3D. Oh yeah, if you're if you're listening to your own game soundtrack, that just means your game's got a banging soundtrack. That's yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, so Adam's got a bop and sound. Yeah, I think like it's interesting, Sam. Like you and Adam both, you were talking about how you kind of owned the art direction. I think for like both of you, I like I just trust you both to do great jobs. And it's like maybe other games are developed a little more kind of together in the process. Yeah. But I think we had a really nice process where we all kind of had our little chunk of the the game to build. And well, for I the most part, you. We, um, me and you together a lot more at the end, but like yeah. on like the asset creation, we all were able to kind of be pretty separate at a lot of the parts. And then I would bring it in, and then usually you and I would have to iterate on like visibility and readability yeah, things, sure. or sometimes size things. I feel like any great collaboration kind of relies on that, though. Like you let the people that are good at yeah. what they do do what they do, and you try and like have criticism here and there to like help push it to a direction, but. You want to work with people who are going to do their job and just like, you're already good at what you do. Um, but also in art direction, like we kind of knew what kind of game we wanted to make. And we'd already had those like iterations of like, we wanted to get away from the space style stuff. So like, yeah, when you said treasure planet, I was like, oh, okay, I'm there. Like, cause yeah. I really love that movie. So Disney's, when you're like, Let's, Disney's treasure yeah. planet for people who aren't aware. Um, someone the other day asked if it was about the book. The Conquer Tribune uh, was very wrong about that. Movie. We, we were, we were, a, we were a video game house growing up <laughs> and a movie house, not much a book house. So uh, it was from Unfortunately, the, the Disney mom movie. didn't get that in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, if there were comic books, we were good. Mom yeah. We read yeah. comic books, but that's, that's about it. I, 
I I was like a little grifter in middle school, and I used the same book for like seven book reports somehow. Oh, so man. that I shows remember. you how much video games I was playing <laughs> in books I was not reading. <laughs> I felt bad in like ninth grade. My teacher dissuaded me from reading like these Jedi books, and I was just like, but that's all I want to read. And so I was like, well, I guess I just won't read for the rest of the year and just get away with a C in English. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is uh. This is good. Um, and I'm currently a professor. Did yeah. <laughs> um, did we want to do... Uh, Irumas, did you want to start Q&A now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, um, if there's anybody on the panel that has any questions, uh, we can start there. And then from there, we can open it up to the audience. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question, just uh, raise your hand and... Uh, simply or 3d or, or myself will invite you to speak one at a time um but yeah let's go ahead and uh start anybody on the panel perhaps glenn do you have uh questions yeah I, i've got a few questions more more on like the the game design side of things i'm not experienced in programming or art um <laughs> but uh so one of the things that's come up a few times is gun trails difficulty and and that's been a this big kind of sticking point it. with a lot of yeah, people no that. for a long that's time crazy. uh how did you sort of decide like what difficulty you wanted to go for how did you sort of define the line of are we going yeah. too far that sort of thing yeah so this was this is a long topic we could probably talk about for a long time but i'll try to keep it reasonable um, so what I really wanted was to kind of open a conversation with players about kind of difficulty and improving in a lot of times that's really hard, right? If you put a game out on Steam or on Switch, there's just so much stuff available that like if your game is really difficult, most players will just bounce off it and go play something else. I think in the play date, I saw like we have this like really special community. And it presents an interesting opportunity that because we don't have like a huge amount of games, we can maybe try more challenging designs and push things on the difficulty envelope and still be able to kind of engage with players on that. And we've seen this with other Playdate games. I think Balanced Brew is famously quite difficult to people. Um, and I'm sure there's others I'm not thinking of, but Balanced Brew is the one that comes to mind. And so like I kind of wanted to use this is an opportunity to have that conversation with them where it's like nothing changes about the game. It's deterministic. The layouts are predictable. The way enemies behave is predictable. And the only thing that can really change from run to run is you improving and like both building up like an intuition for what's going to happen as well as maybe some memorization on when things are going to happen and just improving your skill in terms of dexterity. Because that was... That's kind of the arcade spirit to me, right? Like, if you grow up playing games like Dodonpachi, Mushihime-sama, or any arcade shmup or fighting game, like, the whole thing is, like, the game kind of is what it is, and I have to learn to improve, right? So I'm showing up every day, I'm dropping quarters in, and I'm trying to get better at this thing so I can actually climb that hill, right? And I think people would think, like, that I was some, like, ace player. And it was like, no, like, I think my first big clear on a cave game was Mushihime-sama, and I think it took me like 30, 40 hours, right, before I finally cleared that game. And, you know, as you build up time and you play more of these types of games, you get better, right? Like, a more recent game that I think is excellent is Hazelnut Hex. Um, Hazelnut Hex is a, a really cool cartoon shmup that's on Switch and, and Steam that people should check out. But, like, I was able to clear that one in, like, three or four hours or something. And so... As you do build up intuition kind of across these games, but I just really wanted to like show people what that arcade spirit was about. And so that's kind of the mentality I had in going to select the difficulty. And then like from there, I had people playing it. Um, Sam played it, Adam played it, um, a few friends played it, and, and they were able to clear it. Um, I think Adam cleared it after launch, maybe. And one mm -hmm. of my friends that played it He's very much not a hardcore player. Um, he uh, he was able to clear it, and like so, I was kind of, <laughs> I was kind of like, oh yeah, 
if my friend Carl can clear it and he's like not a hardcore gamer at all, oh, we should be fine. And then so I was, yeah. you know, a, li- a little taken this aback the- with how much harder it was for other people, for sure. Yeah, and it was the first shmup I had ever like actually played. Like I played, uh, like <laughs> the closest things I ever played were maybe like certain sections of Nier Automata and Undertale games that would like you know make you wince if I called them shmups. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, I'm biased because my music was in it, and I'm like, I I want to hear it like in <laughs> context. Um, so that helped me power through, but. Um, it's doable. Yeah, and JP, uh, the Pull Frog dev, also, I love Pull Frog. For a brief moment, I was at the top of one of the leaderboards in Pull Frog. I just want that out there. I am no longer because someone came by and like <laughs> doubled all of our scores recently, but there was a moment in which I was good at that game. Anyways, JP, dev, one of the devs of Pull Frog, had asked the question um, if I think it's due to the D-pad issues on Playdate more than the game's actual difficulty, and yes, I think it is mostly around QA issues with the D-pad. What we've come to find kind of in the gun trail space is people have very varying experiences with their D-pad on their play date. And so some people have a much looser or more inconsistent D-pad feel. And so I think for them, the movement got very, very difficult. And so one of the things we added in the novice patch, um, here, Sam, if I can steal screen real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just pull it up. going through GIFs. Yeah, so one thing we added in the novice patch, so if, let's see. Oh, I unplugged my keyboard. One sec. Well, we get to look at the great title screen, which is totally not inspired by Mega Man Battle yeah. Network. I don't know what it was. Yeah. Talking about <laughs> uh, so if you, if you hit the kind of the Playdate menu button and you go into options, you go to novice mode, you can turn that on. But there's another option here that's called slow ship. Um, and what that was for was really for the people who are having what I thought was D-pad issues, honestly. And so this just slows the base speed of the ship. So uh, both for people who just maybe prefer a slower ship, but all, predominantly this was like, if your D-pad is maybe not as precise as mine is or other playdates are, this will probably help it be a little bit easier for you to move precisely. Um, and so, yeah, that just slows the base bit. Uh, speed of the ship um and it was really aimed to kind of fix that for those users so uh and then, something yeah. interesting you brought up was uh capturing the arcade spirit and i think one of the the big differences for me between arcade games and sort of console releases is like most home games are kind of built with the expectation that you play through it start to finish you beat the game Whereas an arcade game is generally built more on this infinitely increasing skill ceiling. You know, you can get better at the game. You can eventually get a 1cc. That's still not the end because you can get a higher and higher score no matter what. Uh, Did you want to talk about the scoring system? Kind of what inspired that and how it developed over time? Yeah, I mean, and to emphasize your point, Glenn, uh, there's this game called Doranpachi Saigai Ojo which is like the final game that Cave made. I know they've made other phone games since, but we're not going to count those um, because they're just shovelware. Uh, But the last real shmup they made, which was for Arcade and the Xbox 360, uh, commonly referred to as SDOJ, um, that game just had its like ultra-hard two-loop variant beat like a month ago or a few weeks ago. So it was literally out for like 12 years before someone beat like the hardest set of challenges in that game. And so that's kind of the level of like craziness we're talking about. (laughs) We're talking about kind of arcade people and the arcade spirit for sure. Um, Yeah. Uh, And so like getting into the scoring system, uh, we want to do a quick shout out to uh, actually I'm going to pull it up on screen real quick. Let me stop streaming for a second. Oh, wait. I'm I'm silly. I could. Oh wait, no, I can't see it in the simulator because simulator doesn't have networks. So I do have to bring it up on my browser. And we did think about maybe putting in the main menu, but uh, part of that was it was just all that stuff is custom done. There's no like font system, so it is more of a time thing. We we're already working on multiple. Yeah, projects. that that was really so... just like uh, I definitely wanted it to be more front and center. People are asking about 
uh, why the options yeah. menu is a little hidden away. That's definitely a regret. It was just like I wasn't going to ask Sam to kind of redo all the art uh, just to we, yeah. Uh, just to do that, and like, yeah, the main menu was all done with like custom hand drawn fonts, so it was it would it would have been a pretty big lift um, yeah. to to do that. Um, so I wanted to shout out Kwong, who can't be here uh, because their time zone uh, in their time zone it's it's very very late right now, um, but they are the number one Gun Trails player uh, far and away to the degree that when the game came out, they beat it in like, gosh, I think like the first four hours. Um, like it was, like it, was like it was really, really me. fast. And then they did a no miss, uh, a no miss in shmups is when you beat the game without ever getting hit. So they did a no miss, um, I think a couple days later. And so that was, they're, they're an incredible player. TNG Liker, uh, was also here, but had to run to uh, a gig they're performing, but they're also one of the top players. Um, and Chrome, I want to shout out because Chrome is actually like new to shmups. Which was so cool, like they hadn't really gotten into them before, and then they got in and not only like beat the game, but they won CC'd it, which was like I just want to shout them out because like that's really amazing. Uh, one other person I really want to shout out is NNNN. Uh, they've been one of my biggest supporters and one of my biggest like helpers in the community. They're just like a great person and a great schmup player. Um, and they always give useful feedback, and I really appreciate it. Um, they have their own shmup coming out that everyone should keep their eyes out for, which is called Angel Pop. Um, I think it's fantastic. I easily think it's like the next great shmup for Playdate. It's a very different style from Gun Trails, but I think it's like incredible. I think it's really, really awesome and strikes a totally unique tone. Everyone should definitely check out Angel Pop. Um, and yeah, if panic, if panic hasn't already, we're we're gonna storm the gates until they put it in catalog. We're yeah, we're gonna Angel start Pop a movement. Is one of the most exciting games on the way for Playdate yeah. for sure. Yeah, Angel Pop is like this really interesting. I can't even describe it fully. You just y'all are gonna have to see it. It's this really unique experience. It's gonna be awesome. Anyways, getting back to scoring, this is all relevant. I promise. And NNN is like one of the people I talk with scoring systems about a lot. So as we've been doing patches on the game, one of the things that usually changes is scoring mechanics. And so I talk to them and I talk to Glenn and I talk to different people kind of in that community on what we should tweak. And uh, one of the things that happened early on in the game is when you get hit, you have a shield around you. I'll, I'll pull up the game now so I can show it. Uh, when you get hit, let me see, where is it? There it is. Let's see, share, simulator, yes. Yeah, so when you get hit, you have a shield around you. Um, let me try to get hit real quick. So you have the shield, and when you have a shield around you, you can bash into enemies. And in the early version of the game, I had, uh, I had made those shield bashes worth too much. <laughs> and I didn't realize what was going to happen, and like the shmup players started exploiting that and getting crazy scores off of like shield bash exploits. And, <laughs> and so one of the first patches was like kind of upping the value of everything else so it wasn't so incentivized. Uh, because like that wasn't like the intended mode of play, but people just kind of figured it out, and that was really funny. Um, for inspiration, the biggest inspiration is. Um, I'll pull it up now. Let's see. The biggest inspiration is this game called Moochie Moochie Pork. And Moochie Moochie Pork is another cave game. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like, Toad. Yeah, we're all about ham on this show. Exactly. Uh, it's a uh, favorite part of Thanksgiving. Yeah, so there's this game called Moochie Moochie Pork. It's, it's fantastic. Um, but basically, it had this system where you're supposed to kind of build up a chain of regular laser shots. And once you've maxed, got that chain really high up, then you switch to your big wide shot. And then everything you do with your wide shot is based on like some multiplier 
which was built up by those normal shots. And so that's what Gun Trails comes from. Another game that really used this scoring type system was Blue Revolver. Uh, Blue Revolver crystallized it. And so I, you could say we we're inspired by Blue Revolver much more directly, but I wanted to call out Muchi Muchi Pork because it was the inspiration for Blue Revolver. Um, and so, yeah, the scoring system is based on that. Uh, we don't have uh, we don't have what's called dynamic rank in the game. So a lot of shmups like Battle Garega and Dodonpachi will have a rank system, which is basically like the longer you live and the higher score you're getting, your rank goes up. And the higher your rank, the higher the difficulty, right? And so you end up with this kind of dynamically scaling difficulty. And because we were trying to introduce people to shmups with this game, and I wanted to bring new people in, I didn't do dynamic rank because I think that kind of system can be really rewarding for top players, but it can also be like really opaque to new players because then it's like they're not having a consistent experience, right? Like the new players are like, well, that game felt harder than the previous game, and they don't understand that's because like there was a dynamic rank going on and like they had gotten a bunch of extra score. And so that one run, they were running into harder enemies, whereas the other one, they weren't. And uh, one way Blue Revolver gets around this is in its novice mode, it doesn't have dynamic rank. So basically, they have no dynamic rank in the novice. In the normal mode, they have dynamic rank. And then in the hardest mode, the rank is always maxed out to the top. Um, so that was kind of, that was the choice we made. If I make another shmup, wink wink, on Playdate, uh, it might have dynamic rank in the harder version. Um, <laughs> oh, hello, NNN. We didn't know you were here. Uh, I, I actually didn't know you were here. When... <laughs> yeah, so, so Mushi Mushi Pork was definitely like the big inspo along with Blue Revolver, for sure. Do we have like other questions for like any of us? Uh, like, oh yeah, you know, um, game development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I that? think they got. I think there are quite a few. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna focus a lot on on getting that, uh, getting like some behind the scenes art and stuff. But you guys have have an absolute of of this stuff, which is awesome. We can try to post it somewhere too. We have the itch website. We can maybe just like post up an album or something at some point. Yeah, yeah. I, I would. It'd be really awesome to have that available somewhere for people to go look at because it, it was really cool. There was a lot. Was, yeah, Sam. Sam sketches are my favorite. When they were asking, it's funny. They were asking Sam, like, "Do you have any sketches?" He's like, "I don't think so." And I'm like, "Yes, you do." What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> I was like looking back well, through our chat. And <laughs> for like most projects, you spend a lot of time on the concept art and really like define it. But because I'm the sole artist on it. It was just kind of like if it was good enough for me to know what to do, it was good enough to go there. There, pixel art, at least for in my opinion, for the play date, most of the time, like when you're doing really in depth artwork and animation, you know, you have your layout stage, you have your keyframes, you like kind of set everything up, and there's like stages to it. But when it came to pixel art, it just felt easier to just go, okay, here's a rough animation that looks good enough. I'm just going to go at it and just do the whole thing and just kind of start building the parts and animating it. Because you're just working with black and white. So you don't really have to worry about like, are my val like you have to worry about your values, but you don't have to worry about like, are these colors clashing? Does it work with the background? There's a lot more simplicity and uh, quickness compared to like working on like on a full PC game where the process takes a lot longer. Um, right. Yeah. 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 So I, uh, anyway, um, yeah. So I, I pulled up my, my notes from the last time we did one of these. Um, I, I was it, when you're developing, I, I tend to focus a lot on on like the behind the heat scene stuff, as as I mentioned. So I was curious if there were any funny things, funny funny bugs, or things that were really annoying to develop um, that like some people might not notice or appreciate, but you're glad that you got it figured out. That's a good question. Funny bugs. Thank you. There's, I mean, there's one that persists. Uh, it's harmless, <laughs> so I haven't patched it out. Um, when you get to a boss in Gun Trails, you can actually start shooting them before they show up on screen because they like exist in the game state. Um, and like, so a couple people pointed me out. I think Glenn pointed this out to me, and I was like, "Man, people are yelling at me for how hard the game is. Like, I don't think I could take away." a little bit of help that we accidentally gave them at this point. Like, I think, the, I think the people might riot 
Um, so that's one. And then there's another one, which is just like surprising because like a bunch of people have like pointed it out to me. And I'm just surprised how many people notice, which is that you can shoot the scoreboard. And the reason for that is, is like the hitbox for the boss actually just ends up sticking around and doesn't, I forgot to clean it up. So, like, <laughs> the hitbox that you're shooting is actually the boss's hitbox, but it looks like you're able to shoot the scoreboard. But, like, I was just surprised. Like, so many people pointed this out. They're like, did you want to fix this? And I'm like, I don't want to touch that code ever again. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> it's not breaking. Just, just leave it and step away. I think, like, NNNN might know some bugs because they've been testing patches. So they might have seen some bugs. Um... Yeah, people who have tested the patches probably have seen the most bugs. Um, it's a great idea, Ray, about breaking the scoreboard. But then you'd have me having to make a <laughs> animation of I... <laughs> breaking the scoreboard. <laughs> also, Ray, if I made a way, like a meme thing that like takes away their points, again, I think people would be very upset. Like, It'd be hilarious, <laughs> but probably bad game design. <laughs> It'd be hilarious, but it's like until that like really angry German guy starts emailing me again about the difficulty in the game, like we I, I don't want to hear from them again. <laughs> um there was one funny tweet that we saw one time and of like of course it was from some AI bro. It was just like perfect. Oh, of course. But they were like they were like, I didn't realize this was an endless game. Uh, I want my money back. And I was like, I was like, my, my guy, it's not endless. I think you're just really bad. Like, it's definitely not endless. I did not make an endless art supply. There, there is an ending. There is a boss. Yeah. I was like, there's an ending. Like people saw it the first day. Like, uh, that was funny. Um, Sam, was there any other weird bugs we ran into? Um, I mean, we talked about a bunch. I mean, most of it was pretty smooth sailing after the first level. A lot of it was just testing and iteration, though. Like, yeah, I think kinda, well, we no, kind of hit a there, groove. There, there was, was one there bug. One thing? Yeah, oh, okay. there's one I just thought of. So technically, you couldn't. There's this thing in Schmups called the TLB, which stands for True Last Boss. Oh yeah. Oh god. Um, and a True Last um, Boss is in Schmups is like achieved if you get to the end and have satisfied particular conditions, uh, like. Maybe you didn't get hit. Or in gun trails, if you make it to the end and you've only gotten hit once or no times, you'll see the true last boss. But in the very first version of the game, there was a bug to where you wouldn't actually see the true last boss. And so in the most recent patch that got fixed up, or the second most recent patch that got fixed up, and so people could actually see it. Um, uh -huh. In the most recent patch, uh, we also added their music. So there was separate music that Adam created for the true last boss that I hadn't been able to fit in yet memory wise, but we were able to clean a lot of things up in the 1.2 patch that added novice mode. And so it also got its own music. But yeah, that was like a funny one because like only like top players were seeing like the true last boss. This is like 10 people. Well, what's funny too is <laughs> you were like, the original was like the Reaper is like the final true last boss, right? Because that train was supposed to be the last boss. It was a like, miscommunication. Hey, we need, yeah, we need another another <laughs> boss, which is why the spirit came about. And I was just like, but I put everything I had into the the, the reaper. Yeah, if you want to, if you like, want to pull up the spirit, Sam, we can give people a preview. Um, yeah, I did toggle cool one. through that, but let me bring those up. He's lur he's lurking around here somewhere. So let's go ahead and bring him into the fray. This one? No, I've got too many windows open. I got to close a bunch of them. This should be it. Okay, so this is like the original true last true last boss, and it was just like, okay, this was a ton of fun uh, to kind of make. And then once we got done with it, it was like, okay, well, we need the true true last boss. I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> we need like, one more. What are we what What are we gonna do? Like another one? It's like, okay, I mean, he breaks apart and kind of gets destroyed. So I was like, okay, he's kind of like a lich, so maybe he's got a phylactery and like his spirits inside of there. So eventually, it's like uh, if if anyone's old enough to have watched the TMNT cartoon, um, it's like Crag. Oh yeah, it is kind of like Krang. I I wasn't thinking oh, about Krang, that. Oh Krang, yeah, time. You're right. Yeah. My memory is fuzzy. I definitely pulled some <laughs> Adventure Time shenanigans where I was just like, well, maybe it's kind of like the Lich from Adventure Time. That could be kind of cool. Yeah. And then we came up with uh, sure. 
yeah we came up with this spirit thing um as like the final version and the final true last boss that you get to uh if you have a no miss and that was a lot of fun to do too but i also had to limit the scope and then i gave him like a really crazy long intro animation of the spirit and he's just like what are you doing i said i said keep it short i was like I, I don't I can't help it. I only I only know how to go ham. That's it. That's that's, that's why one setting. It's either doing nothing or going ham. There's not much of a yeah. delineation between the two. Yeah. No, this was this was supremely on me though because I just I miscommunicated the number of final bosses that I would need. Um It's okay too. Like <laughs> we, we figured out to what we needed by the time we got to it. Um cuz the when we were launching the game, it was like a rush to kind of just get everything even and like a like okay everything's smooth and gonna like not not break or anything yeah it was it was there's was two big pushes there was like we showed the game at gdc at the play date like meetup and that was like the mm-hmm. first time people saw it um and so sam and i were crunching until the night before gdc oh. <laughs> um and yep. so like that was like very much like hot off the presses build uh, I, you're just starting I, to get I probably two. i was there yeah. so i yeah. probably saw 3d 3 was there that's where we yeah. met um man it's so long I'll, ago now i know so we <laughs> were there uh chris from direct drive was there the strangest guys were there nevin was there a lot of people um and so like that was cool because like i just had no idea like how people would feel about it and like we got a lot of really nice encouragement at that meetup that like it was worth finishing the game and it was like worth pursuing. Um, and so then we kind of picked a date with panic and then it was like another big crunch in June, May and, and July to, to finish it April up. April and May were, yeah, a huge crunch of just like, I think it was doing mostly to level two and three. Cause I think we only had like level one basically done at that point. And we were like yeah. starting to like concept the other two levels but then we're like, all right, we're going to aim for June. I'm like, all right, I'll see you in three months. So yeah, it got, yeah it, got, it got stressful at the end, too, because it was like I normally don't have many social engagements that I have to go to. But it was like uh, my girlfriend's like family had a wedding like the weekend before we were releasing. And so, oh, like, yeah, I was like in a car on like driving to a wedding. But it's like she was driving and I was programming gun trails in the car. <laughs> and like <laughs> i had it with me and so like i would sneak away and play it and like start working at different times like when there was enough of a lull i would, <laughs> I would just sneak away and start working on it again the funny part too is like i was hands off at that point i was like it's all you good good luck and i just kind of like <laughs> sat back i was just like you're right it's all yeah. up to you I, I finished my just hand off the baton yeah yeah that was crazy um, I think we can go to the next question. Maybe uh, we are ready for audience questions. Uh, if anybody out there has got a question, just uh, raise your hand and one of the staff members will call you up to the stage. Someone give Adam a question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Doesn't even have to be about music. No, it could be about ham too. I mean, that's clearly the point of this talk. It's not about yeah. There's that. <laughs> Sam, I was thinking not just to. You got me thinking of Adventure Time. I was I think it might have been a good idea if you had the Reaper transform into a, a giant baby as the final. Oh yeah, Dubai's that should have been boss. like a. Hey, maybe in some other game and some other time we'll have weird. Yeah, Easter we'll egg hold animations. on to that idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just turn every enemy into a baby. They don't move or animate. They're just there. They just kind of float in space, like uh, from Super Mario World Two, where it's like the Yoshi baby, like the baby's <laughs> in a bubble, and he's just floating and replaces all the enemies. I think that sounds great. I would play that game. <laughs> Gun Trails Two, maybe someday, but the other shmup I'm noodling on is not a sequel to Gun Trails. Um, we are it's working on an HD version of Gun Trails for console and stuff. Yes. Sam, if you want to pull up some of those gifts, that'd be cool to show people. Yeah, let me let me let me find what folder. Uh, and is. then if we have another question, we can field that while Sam's pulling stuff up. I'm curious. Was there any main feature that you guys really wanted to add that just didn't didn't make it? Got cut. Yeah, there's a few. Let me pull up the. 
Let's see. Ah, uh, there's so okay. So I'm gonna pull this one up. I'm gonna steal screen yeah, real quick, Sam. Uh, just so I can show them this. So one thing I've always wanted to do in a shmup uh, is if you've ever played this game called like SSX Tricky, or if you've played Devil May Cry, they have these like really cool kind of combo yeah. systems where they have like a creative meter that builds up and like rewards you kind of for creative combos that you build up. I've always wanted to build that into a shmup, um, and we had ideas. And this image was like kind of part of those ideas. Uh, and we just didn't get there. Like the chain system is in gun trails, but we actually wanted to go further in our ability to reward creativity. And so that was, that was sad. Um, the other thing I wanted to build in that didn't make it was I wanted to add an endless mode for people. Um, but we just didn't end up having time for it. But I would have liked to have programmed in an endless mode for people to... For like, especially for like the high score chasers, um, that would have been cool. Okay, I can pull up some of the HD art of what we're working on. Let me move folders over. I'm just going to try and share my whole screen and try and just bring that stuff up on there. So obviously some, uh, Scott, uh, there's some uh, background art from Samurai Jack. That's a constant influence. Uh, so we're currently working on the HD version, um, creating all of this in Adobe Animate. Uh, we've got a bunch of the enemies kind of going. It's going to be a long haul of a project, but it is definitely in the works. Um, a lot of fun to just kind of be unrestrained in terms of like color and design, too. I don't have to worry about pixel size uh, or anything like that. And all this stuff is still being iterated. Like This is still early model stuff of trying to see what fits, see what works um, yeah. in that kind of aspect. But and I'm currently working on the bosses, too, for it. On that note, also, Adam, maybe you can talk a little about the arrange um, is, a, is a fun thing that's going on. Oh, yeah. this I think it's going to be awesome. Um, yeah, so we're, we're working on an arrange album of uh, the existing soundtrack, um, which, like, so far, it's sounding pretty amazing um and these are so they're my original songs from the uh playdate gun trails um and we've brought in a whole bunch of composers um i have the number off the top of my head but it's like 10 uh, or something it's a lot yeah we're, we're pretty much doing like one person per track so um you've got like 10 11 people uh, and I've only heard, Josh, maybe you've heard more than I have. I've heard a couple of finished tracks and some, some works in progress that a few people are working on, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's sounding wild. Um, a lot of different styles, which like, I'm totally digging. There's like, um, some like house stuff. There's like t telebashers doing like a, an emotional jazzy, sort of live instrument um arrangement of one of the tracks um yeah it's it's kind of, it's coming along super great so i think josh maybe you can um i guess confirm what the intention is but i i think the hd version will have both soundtracks was that what you were thinking yeah yeah so a big thing and no surprise to shmuppers in the room but a big thing that a lot of releases will do especially if it's for a game that had been out before is they'll have these arrange albums, right? And sometimes it's a mix of composers that work on them. Sometimes it's uh, a single composer just rearranges the entire album. Um, but what they'll do is then you can go in the menu in the game and select whether you want to play the original track or the arranged track. And then some games will go even further and they'll have an arranged version of the game as well, right? So you'll have basically a remix on that shmup and so you can play through it both with, you know, the arranged music, but also like this arranged, differentiated set of gameplay. Um, and so that's that's what we're going to allow. Blue Revolver does that, and it's really great. Uh, Blue Revolver in particular has one of my favorite arranged soundtracks ever um, by this kind of like techno house artist. Um, it's it's fantastic. Uh, I, uh, yeah. I have one. Let's see. Let me see if I can find. I'll try to pull up one of the tracks. Um, yeah, it's, it's it been a ton of fun, and and you were kind enough to kind of let me 
just invite a whole bunch of my friends and kind of like the music <laughs> and the digital fusion space to come in and be like, hey, I know I got a handful of folks who I trust. Um, and you were like, yeah, all right, let's <laughs> let's bring them in. Um, and then you had a couple friends too. Uh, I think I've heard one of their tracks so far. Oh, that's the one you just posted. Yeah. From yeah. Alex. So Alex, yeah. Uh, Alex is a cool friend. He He works over at Sony on sound design. Um, and he's also really into composing music. And so he's one of my friends we brought over. I think that's a really cool one. Um, uh, uh, Telebasher's track is also fantastic. Um, I'm trying to find it on my Twitter. That's too many memes, too many memes. I can't find it. Uh, uh where does it go? <laughs> Uh, one second, Sam. Keep showing them cool art while I find this. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. I was gonna we say have a lot of ideas uh, for the, the arranged music for Blue Revolver, and I know some of those tracks were. Uh, there were some arrangements done by Exemia, who also did the entire soundtrack for uh, Gunvane, which is another really great shmup. With really. Oh, great is soundtrack. I did I didn't know there was a crossover there. That's so funny. Yeah. So, both great games. Check them both out. Yeah, Gunvane. I hadn't talked about it as much. It's a more recent shmup, but I'm going to grab the, the link to that just so people see it. Um, because Gunvane, I think, since Blue Revolver um, is the best indie shmup we've seen in the last like 5-10 years easily. Some people will say it's a Zero Ranger, but uh, it's Gunvane. Um, <laughs> Gunvane's superb it's designed by this guy named bog hog it's it's just fantastic um let me see oh here it is and i posted another one of the the arranged links by telebasher um uh this stuff's only out in snippets right now um but it uh, it'll be out in a full album at some point. Uh, so yeah, like Sam said, this stuff's like really, you know, it's it's slow going. It's a lot. It's a lot more work uh, to kind of produce uh, the assets at like 4K quality and and put all that stuff together. And it's also been work to kind of port my engine over from Playdate specific stuff over to kind of PC and SDL2 because uh, this stuff's targeting you know like PC and consoles. So. That's been that's been a lot of a lot of effort um, just on the kind of platform side. Um, luckily, on the engine side, it's that part's not so bad because Gun Trails was really written from the ground up with no kind of additional code outside of like draw, like the image drawing stuff and the sound playing stuff and the input management stuff from the SDK. Yeah, it's it's still like we're, we're moving along on it. It's I finally kind of found what I want to do with the art direction, but obviously that stuff will be iterated on and like change the more that we find like what works and what doesn't work. But we also have a couple of other projects uh, for the play date uh, being worked on. Um, yeah. 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 We've shown, we shown a few previews. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the play date stuff is, is generally smaller to set people's expectations. Like it's just some yes. ideas I wanted to put out there, some feelings I wanted to share and like, so I'm calling them vignettes. So it's, you know, it won't be as huge and like kind of expansive as like Gun Trails was. Uh, but I think people will enjoy it nonetheless. So that stuff will be cropping up around this summer. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what's, uh, do we have more questions? Was there anybody so. out in the, uh, in the audience who had any questions? Because otherwise, uh, I I have one question. Uh, so my question would be, uh, regarding the HD version of Gun Trails, uh, like you said, it's obviously um, a while's out from now, but... Very early in development, yeah. What, was there anything else that you could tell us about that... Uh, uh, in terms of perhaps uh, expanding gameplay elements now that it's going to be targeting PC 
and console, uh, more more enemies, more levels. Uh, could you tell oh, us yeah. more about that? Um, for sure. It's so shmups are typically five levels. There are variances like I think uh, Glenn is it Batsugan that's like seven levels. Yeah, Batsugan is seven, and uh, but, even but, the first note on Pachi is six. So um, yeah, but but five is kind of the standard. Uh, Gun Trails was three, not for like really like playdate specific reasons. It was just like, man, we got to finish a game at some point. We got to get this thing out. It was also a scope <laughs> thing too. We ran into a lot of like, we say like, let's make eight levels. It's like, let's, let's this time just have three. That's, that's a manageable number to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So for, for the expansion, definitely we're moving to five levels. Um, we're also doing a bunch of kind of, modes that reuse those components that I've really liked in other shmups. So we're doing um, kind of what's called a boss rush mode, which is where you just play the bosses back to back to back. Um, we're doing training modes, uh, which is really, really important in kind of high-end shmups, is giving people a way to create what are called save states. And so they can just practice particular portions of the game that they're having trouble with. Um, so those are really important, and I'm also working on building like a proper replay system, uh, which anyone who's built one of those knows it's kind of uh, difficult. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm kind of fudging my way through that right now, figuring out how to how to build a good uh, retail sys- uh, sorry retail replay system. Um, yeah, so it'll definitely be pretty expanded from the original. But one fun thing I'm hoping to do is include the original gun trails as like a mini game inside of gun trails hd um gun trails hd is just like uh, to be clear it's just like what we call it internally i don't know if it's just going to be called gun trails or something else we might just call it gun trails again i don't know um but might add a fighting game suffix at the end or whatever yeah gun trails (laughs) ex uh black label (laughs) what does it stand Um, for i don't know super gun trails it's yeah (laughs) it's uh (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Um, so people are asking, there's another question, and I'll just repeat it uh, to make sure like anyone who's not like watching Discord chat knows what it's about. Um, uh, Ray and others have asked about uh, getting rid of the loading screen saga. So, uh, yeah, we can get into that. <laughs> you want to start sharing your screen about stuff that uh like no I mean, it's, it's mostly just it's mostly just talky talk and okay. you know your, your stuff looks cool so we'll leave it up there um so gun trails came out and like one thing that was like kind of a big frustration for me personally was a lot of the reviewers were like a little myopic about the loading times in my opinion like it has a one time 45 second ish load uh, when you first boot the game up, but then all the restarts are instant, and uh, that was kind of the trade-off we made at the time, and I was I was pretty okay with that. Um, I thought it was like a really decent trade-off to make, because you're going to want to keep restarting the game. And, like, but it just kind of kept getting hammered home, and finally, one more review came out, and, like, kind of really hammered us on it, and, like, I like went off and just started coding and I didn't really tell anyone, Sam or Adam or anyone about it. And I was like, I'm going to try to see if I can figure out how to fix this. Um, And so there was a few things that I did that were really able to cut the loading time down. The first one was I took, um, I took the audio and I stopped compressing it with the Playdate compiler and I stopped compressing the images with the Playdate compiler. Um, because I noticed a lot of time in the loading was spent in libz. And if you don't know what like libz is, it's like a decompression and compression system. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, so it's spending a lot of time on compression. So I, I took that out. That was a decent little win. But the other thing is that the operating system that Playdate is built on has a file system cache. And that file system cache can work with a really high number of files but it actually falls off a cliff performance wise based on the number of file handles you have open and so the way we were loading was 
loading a ton of files. And this was because I wanted to let Sam kind of work in his natural way, and he was just exporting individual PNGs. And for runtime performance, this was fine, but what was happening was it was just slamming the file system cache. So things were just getting bumped out over and over, and when you were loading, it was just taking huge, huge amounts of time. Uh, so then I ran into the problem of, it's like, okay, I want to limit the number of file system uploads, but I don't want to... Uh, or Sorry, I want to limit the number of file system handles open during loading, but I don't want to change any of the runtime code, right? Like, gun trails had become really battle-tested at that point, and I didn't want to update, like, rendering code or any of that. So it's like, how do you change the way that assets get loaded in a way that's both faster but also backward compatible with all the gameplay and runtime code? And so then I made my own uh, image compressor, which batches images into tables while retaining their same white space offset around them for all these transparent PNGs. And basically recreated a format very similar to Playdate's table format. So if you've seen the LCD bitmap table, I was able to move them over to all that. Um, but in a way where I could load them and still have the same memory layout as I had before. So none of the runtime code had to change any of the assumptions it had about that stuff. So that was the big thing. Um, the other stuff that came up was I did a bunch of loop flattening, which was so like you have four loops that go through a bunch of things, and I just unrolled those uh, three or four times because I noticed in the output assembly that GCC wasn't actually doing a great job of unrolling loops like it should. Um, and in a couple other places, I did what's called loop fusion, which is kind of going the opposite way, where you have two things doing things in separate for loops, and they would actually be faster if you fuse them. Um, because they're typically operating on data in the same cache line. Uh, so those were the big wins. Um, and so like a lot of it came from kind of the process I was trying to like I was trying to let Sam have that process as an artist and not have to care about whether they were dealing with individual frames or not. Um, and like it just it ran into that that file system cache pretty hard. Um, and I didn't realize until I was able to kind of sit down post-release and, and really take the time to understand it, that that's what was going on. Um, so yeah, uh, if in general, if people use LCD bitmap tables, they should be fine. Um, the only other thing our loader does is uh, it's able to be kind of asynchronous, right? So it's able to go off and load stuff and pause every so often to keep an animation playing and keep the loading screen going. Um, given there's no loading screen now, but that was that was kind of the other part of it. Um, and I can I've been talking to other people about sharing this. We can we can look at sharing the code in maybe a way that's like Lua friendly, because it it basically is able to load all the assets in the same kind of way um, and just treats them as like generic things uh, without losing any performance. Okay, let's see. So, a uh, really good question from a. Uh... NNNN that kind of follows up something me and Yarmus were talking about before the stream uh, yeah. is uh, shmups now, like today, are pretty much entirely indie dominated. There's not a lot of new arcade releases and especially not from like AAA publishers. Are there any like smaller, maybe lesser known projects that you want to shout out or even just like upcoming games that you're looking forward to? Hmm. So is that, uh, sorry, I was answering, I was, I was repeat, replying to someone in chat. Is this shmups I'm looking forward to or non-shmups I'm looking forward to? Yeah, shmups, like kind of smaller, like maybe okay. indie games that people might not be aware of. Oh man, let me, I'm going to pull up, uh, let me pull up my bookmarks because yes, there's, there's quite a few. Um, yeah, there's that one developer we've referenced. <laughs> A couple times they're working on a game so bog hog the, the guy who That's developed gun vein he's working on a beat-em-up that i think looks really really cool um it's pretty early days but that's one to keep an eye on um but really anything bog hog does like i'll be playing um there's one uh let me see steam ah. and i can bounce over to you too yeah to find the page and we can host it Oh, I can uh, I can just share the link. Uh, so there's a lot of games I see kind of from the local space I'm in uh, in Los Angeles. 
Uh, there's one really great game called Death of a Wish uh, that I think people should give a look to. It's a really fantastic dodge roll action game that tells like a really cool, meaningful story about religion, religious oppression, and cults. And I think it's a really personal story for the creator. And like uh, I've met him a few times. He's a super sweet guy. Um, and the game is fantastic uh, with a really, really unique art style. So that's one that just dropped. That's definitely worth checking out. Um, what else? Definitely every shmup I've referenced in this. They're not new, but you should play them anyways. Um, let's see. Another one. We've talked about this in my chat, um, but not everyone's in that chat, so I'm still going to share it here. Another one is El Paso Elsewhere, I think is like fantastic. It's a new game that kind of hits the style of Max Payne. Um, if uh, if anyone is too young to have played Max Payne, um, you should still play this because Max Payne was really cool. Um, it uh, yeah, it kind of hits that that PS2 era art style really really well. Um, oh, and probably the game I'm looking forward to the most, at least like right now in my brain, like I'm sure like everyone else, like that changes day to day. But right now, it's, uh, let me grab the link. Let's see. It's this game that's only out in demo form right now, and they're slowly working on it. It's called Unbreakable, or Unbeatable, sorry. And it's got one of the coolest styles I've seen in a game in a long time. It's this like really cool anime style that's filtered with like a CRT bloom. And it's a rhythm game with like a fantastic soundtrack on it. Um, yeah, I think Unbeatable is like really, really cool, and people should check it out. Sam, I'm sure you probably have a couple that you're you're keeping an eye on. Uh, I don't know if I have any shmups that I'm keeping the eye on. I, I'd have to look through my list of like games. A lot of the games that I really liked kind of just came out. Like um, Bomb Rush Cyberpunk was one of my favorite games in a while. Bomb Rush uh, is that great. Game, that just ooze yeah, style. Hi-Fi Rush was also another one that I really enjoyed. I love ca character action games. So mix that with like a Ben 10 Cartoon Network uh, 2000s vibe. And I was just like, oh, this is my jam. I can't wait to play more of this. Um, I've actually been going old school lately. I've been playing Okami for the first time. And that's been fun to experience that game. Because the art style has been so unique. Uh, revisiting an old Clover Studio title has been fun. Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, I think it's hard for shmups because it's like really we get a great one every like three or four years at this point, and you don't always know that they're coming. Um, because like Gunvane was the last one, and then before that it was Blue Revolver and Zero Ranger. Uh, Zero Ranger was really cool. I really like the art direction for that. Yeah, Zero Ranger is really unique looking game for sure. Um, yeah, I think probably the. Some of the most exciting like shmup releases on the horizon are uh, Earthion by Yuzo Koshiro, I think is his name. Oh, um, yeah, that's a good like, one. Like Genesis dev at Sega making a new shmup for the Genesis. Um, that's wild. Also, Devil Blade oh, yeah, is that, a uh, yeah. Dizaimon game from way back in the day that's getting remastered on PC. Oh, oh. hold on. I, I have the answer for this. Ah, man, they're going to revoke my card, Sam. Give me the screen. Yeah, sure. All right. So this Sounds game like just insane. came out, but I'm counting it because it's fantastic. Um, hold on. Click, click, and then... Okay. No. Why would I want to well, pick the Discord screen? Uh, I do have a game I can think of, but it's it's an old one. Just not enough people played it, honestly. So there's this game called Radergy 2, and given how much I talked about Radergy 1, you can probably guess how excited I am. It just came out, and it's fantastic. Um, it's from it's from this eclectic group called RS34, who used to be called Milestone. Um, they make this, and they make a game that me and NNNN love called Il Velo. Um, both of which are fantastic, but this one just came out and also includes a port of the original Radergy one. Um, these games are chaotic and super fun, and this one's actually doing 
some really unique designs with like twin stick stuff and not twin stick kind of in the way that you're thinking of with like a traditional uh oh god what was that xbox 360 game called sam geometry wars geometry wars yeah like was, was that the first called? xbox arcade yeah, yeah so it's not that kind of twin stick it's like really got this unique thing where you can send out like a second little object and move it independently of your ship and you can use it to infect objects and then if you infect them and then shoot them you get bonuses and it's got a really kind of unique score system built upon that um so yeah i my answer is strategy 2 for sure because that just came out uh they're also doing a port of il velo um for sure so that's another one I do yeah. have one game I want to shout out that I think is cool. Um, Adam put me in contact and I did the uh, illustration art for it. It's currently up on Steam and you can play a demo of it, but I also just think it's rad. Um, it's called Redline Crooks. Like it's oh, still yeah. being developed, but it's just a funky little car. It reminds me of like some old Genesis games and stuff. Um, nice. Yes. And, hell yeah. Yeah. Redline Crooks so shout I, out. Yeah, I, w- I wanted to shout this out because I got to do the Steam art, but also at the same time, I got to play the demo, and I just love the vibe. And also, a cool. uh, similar thing, if anyone hasn't played Flint Hook, they should go play Flint Hook. It's by Tribute Games. Not enough people yeah, talk Flint, about Flint. how amazing that, that game is, and I just feel like I have to sh- shout out Dom2D every time because I love that game so much. Actually, double shout out Dom2D. I got to meet them at the GDC Playdate event. Oh, they're, nice. making a play- they're making a Playdate game now, and that's going to be cool, oh, too. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, yeah. Glenjamin, I am so sorry because I have like three copies of Radergy 2 in my house because I have no self control <laughs> and I got it for all three platforms. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't even know that was on the way until you messaged me about it like the day before launch. And yeah. Then, uh, yeah, a lot of free orders had already been made. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's. Uh... It's amazing. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Strategy one, I've been having a ton of fun with for the last couple of weeks. It's such a good game. It's it was like, you know, we've all seen this with indie games where if like they have a particular look that people aren't used to or don't like aren't like ready to like, they they sometimes get ignored and Radergy had that problem because it kind of came out in the early Dreamcast era and it had like a flash look. And P- at that time, people were like, oh, Flash game, gross. Like, they don't want it. And they were just, like, <laughs> poo-pooing, yeah. like, Flash games, and they were poo-pooing anything that was cel-shaded, um, which was, like, if you were a player during the GameCube era, you saw that with Wind Waker, right? Like, I remember, like, the yep. pushback on Wind Waker's look, which, like, we we think about it now, it's, like, it's crazy. It's one of the coolest-looking games ever. I but at the time, I like, people were like... Kids too. Yeah. I was like, I don't know about this. And then I played it, and I was like, okay, this may be one of the greatest art directions I've ever seen in a video game. I didn't know the yeah. word art direction at the time, but I was just like, I was wrong. Super yeah. Wrong. Yeah. Like, stuff like Killer7, uh, Wind Waker, like... No uh, More Heroes. No More Heroes. Like, that art style is so timeless, man. It's it's great. Oh, but yeah, at the, at the time, you. people were like, why is there this flash shmup? I don't want to play it. Leave me alone. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Milestone, tragically, like, was never able to get the kind of success that Cave got. But I think their games are just as cool. Of course, NNN introduced someone to Killer7. That tracks. Great game. So yeah, if, if you think we're making deep cuts here to games, just hit up NNN. In the in the Discord, they will have way deeper cuts than me, even for sure. <laughs> Good rule of thumb is if if NNN ever recommends a game, it's worth playing. Yeah, yeah. Someone's got to throw that on a box art. Just have yeah. like the seal of approval. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do for the next next playdate shmup. I'm just gonna like literally be like, this game is good from NNN. That's all I've got to say. Was that- They'll be like, was that a typo? No, no, that's their username. You can find them. That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, also Angel Pop. I already talked about it. That's another super anticipated game for me. I think Angel Pop's fantastic. I haven't won CC'd it yet, um, but I have played a couple hours of it, and I really, really enjoyed what I've what I've played so far. Yeah, I've been I've been playing a build that NNNN sent me. I've won CC'd it on normal and nightmare now. It's so fun. Yeah, oh my god, it's, it's good. It's it's fantastic. And 
uh, I guess I ended up becoming an odd person, Glenn, because I actually really enjoyed the crank bass controls versus like the strict D pad one. Yeah, me too. Uh, the crank's yeah. great. And he, because he was like thinking about removing it, and I was like, no, 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 keep it. Like I like this. Uh, <laughs> so that was that was funny. Um, I I wouldn't have expected I liked those more, but but I did. Yeah, it feels really good. Yeah, Angel Pop is, I think, like at one point and then described it as like almost like a slideshow, like one of those old projectors, like those backgrounds. And I think that nails it. It's really, really cool. Did we, uh, did we have more questions? Um, uh, I think that I'm looking aware. up, it looks like NNNN was asking any word on the uh, Hori Cutem up that y'all are working on. Oh, <laughs> uh, gameplay wise, yes, I've done quite a bit. Art wise, Sam has been really directed and kind of focused on Gun Trails HD. Um, yeah, and our next but, play you know, game, which is like uh, the one that's on the burner right now, like that's I, I can't wait to work on the Cutem up. I think the concept we came up with is really really cool in terms of art direction but yes that is on the tape that's tabled for right now unfortunately yeah yeah too many projects too many projects but it will come it will come yes uh the vignettes the vignettes i talked about are kind of taking priority um mostly because i kind of wanted to grow as a as a game designer and and learn things and those were kind of smaller avenues to do that um like i have a pretty clear idea of what i want to build for the cutem up Whereas like these other things, they pose opportunities for me to learn and, and improve as a designer for sure. Yeah, like yeah, I, I look I'm at hype too. I, I I've looked at games like OOM or Oom. I don't know how we're supposed to pronounce it, but I think it's fantastic. Um games like that, games like Cocoon that just do such great jobs with like tacit explanations. Um a lot of games like I played like that recently have inspired me, and so like that's kind of where I pivoted to wanting to work on this other stuff first because I was like really honestly in awe of how how well they do certain things, and I was like I want to improve on those things, and so that's kind of where my my head space has been, um, and why like the the cute mops just just waiting a little bit. It's gonna be really cool though when it uh, comes out. Yeah, the art it'll direction be, it'll is be really good. It's already is figured out. It's just like okay, cool. Once, um, we, once we get through the other stuff, it's gonna be gonna be great. Those are yeah. the two games that we're working on though are gonna be really. Yeah, you fun can as well. you can pull up the you can pull up the concept art for for that if you want, Sam. Okay, but they're they're not gonna see it for a long time. So just just be warned. Yeah. This is this is <laughs> this is yeah. gonna be a while before this comes out. So don't be like, oh man. Um, if you don't have it, so, I also have it up. Oh yeah, I, I, I have it. I have it chilling. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm I'm looking forward to having this kind of delivery dongo driver. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun with yokai and uh, different bosses and stuff like that. So it's going to be pretty neat um, when it comes out. But this is like we said, it's it's on the back burner for um, for a little bit. Game. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. once it comes out though, it'll be it should be fairly simple just because we've made gun trails. So we don't say know that. Don't to... say fairly simple. Okay. You're, you're, <laughs> simple you're, simple for me. You're cursing simple us. For me, simple for me and the some of the art stuff, because I kinda know how to handle <laughs> the pixel art. I can't I have a I have a sheet of information of like, ah, this is how you do it. Six frames and this is how the background should look. So a lot of that stuff will make it a little bit easier. It's still going to be hard because it's game development. Yeah. But um, it, yeah, it this, will, this will be a lot of fun. It definitely has one of the ideas I'm really excited about. Like I'm trying to find ways to like remove UI from games as much as possible, like textual UI. And so we were like, when we were thinking about the Dongo, it was like, oh, they could literally be your health points. And then you don't yeah. need like this big kind of player UI, right? And it's especially like valuable on Playdate because we have such little screen real estate. It's like, how can you let that be all about the game, right? And even for, you're obviously going to need a scoreboard. Don't worry, we're not going crazy. Like, but for the scoreboard, <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't remember which game I'm, I saw this in. I want to give them credit. I just can't remember it right now. But I saw this in a shmup where 
when bullets would go near it or the player would go near the scoreboard, it would go semi-transparent. And that was something I want to do is like, so for the little bit of textual UI, we do have to have make it so it can fade away a little bit to kind of give the full screen real estate, excuse me, to the player. Yeah. So there's, I think there's, there's a lot of ideas I'm really excited about in that space. Um, but the kind of the engine and the gameplay will probably be done well before like we get Sam's time to to make it all pretty. Um, so it'll be yeah. those those little sad faces I showed until then. But it'll be fun. Yes. <laughs> so and and, and and you'll be getting test builds <laughs> with my sad face art, but um, everyone else will have to wait. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're prioritizing the HD is kind of like first and foremost, but also the current game, which is the art's basically done for it, but we have. It's still going to be a while before we kind of get everything together. Uh, yeah, and we've shared we've shared that a couple times. I'd say the name of it, but we're we're still Wait, deciding the name. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, so we, yeah, the other game you can pull up the art if you want. Um, I can do that. That game will also be coming very soon. Um, it was tentatively called Crash and Burn, but like we are waiting to see what the, the lawman says we're allowed to call the game. Um, so. Yeah. You know, trademarks are fun. We we just have to wait and see what it's what it's going to be called. But it's got a lot of really fun stuff in here. Um, uh, Meredith, uh, our friend, is is writing on it now, and they're doing a fantastic job. And so that's kind of the last piece that's coming together is them writing kind of the dialogues. Um, but it stars this character Gordo, who works in like a very typical Dilbert style office, um, and he. Uh, he has this nemesis named Tib, who kind of wreaks havoc throughout the days. And what that actually unfolds in terms of gameplay is he it's like rhythm games and puzzle games. And uh, each of those has like their place throughout the story. But then there's also endless versions of them for the arcade players. So basically for each of the four base game types, there will be an endless variant that you can just play ad nauseum for score. Uh, yeah, and so this is just one of Tib's like intro animations. So yeah, like most of the art is basically done for this. There's going to be some more stuff to be done, but like uh, Josh was saying, we're having a really cool writer, Meredith, come on. Uh, what game did they just recently work on? Um, uh, so Meredith was a, the writer for dialogues on Penny's Big Breakaway, um, yeah. and so I met them. I met them through Hunter, who's one of the lead programmers, and I became friends with him. Um, and kind of one of the sticking points for me with this game, it's been close to done for a while, but like, I, I was just having trouble writing dialogue to be frank. Like I was like, this is okay, but it's not funny. It doesn't, it's not getting the emotions across that I want to get across. And like, luckily Hunter was able to link me up with Meredith and like, they're gonna do a much better job than I ever could. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I'm super excited. I mean, all the, I mean, Penny's Big Breakaway, that was going to be a game I, I, I would have shouted out. It's incredible. Um, also, yeah, but, uh, everyone yeah. should go play Penny's Big Breakaway. It's fantastic. Yeah, no question. I. It's just like, I'm so sad to be done with it. It's a game where, like, I loved the first world. I was like, oh, this is pretty good. And then by, like, towards the end of the game, I was like, oh, I'm, like, genuinely in love with this game. This is just pure joy. Um but yeah, super good. The dialogue is is great, and there's a lot of it too. Uh, just like walking around, um, like every section is just like packed with little guys that all say something funny. Um, and yeah, that was that was all all Meredith is my understanding. So yep. yeah, super excited to see kind of how how that shapes up in in this game. Um, and the music's yeah. been fun too. It's been. Uh, if the references you gave were like in a different direction from gun trails and just the mood has been like it's just different it's not like as like blistering <laughs> uh <laughs> it, it's more fun it's a little more like all right like we're having a good time like there's some energy but like you know it's yeah. not not life and death kind of music um well the fun thing about this time. project too is like this is a game idea we had back in like 2014 or something and we're like really hey, yeah we're just we're just getting one. out all these demons of games we failed to finish <laughs> yeah one at a time <laughs> but yes adam is on the adam's on the beat again of course um and they're doing yep. a great job of course uh 
It's got some really cool inspirations from things like if you've seen the show Halt and Catch Fire, thematically, Halt and Catch Fire was definitely like a fun inspiration point. Um, though it's not nearly as serious as that show gets, of course. But it was a good, the reference was great in just kind of starting like, all right, what are my sounds? Um, so that was a good starting point. Um, I ended up going almost more sort of like Genesis on this one. Um, there's a lot yeah. of that like Sega Genesis crunchy bass, um, which which I love. Um, yeah, and so yeah. Sam is, Sam's pulling up the art from the failed unfinished Love 2D <laughs> version from like yep. 2013 or something. Whatever this um, was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, awesome. so it's a <laughs> Yeah, there's Tib. It's been in existence yep. for a while. Um I when I when I started developing for Playdate games, it was like when before the Playdate was out and it was in Love 2D, and I thought that that would be a much more common thing, so it's interesting to hear that you guys did uh work in Love 2D as well. Yeah, yeah. Love 2D was like really how i started pushing on games like professionally i've always been working in c plus plus but like c plus plus sucks and so like when i'm doing stuff in my spare time like i don't want to use it <laughs> so i kind of gravitated towards lua um yeah. yeah and and so it was like a pretty natural transition for sure because i think like love 2d and in the playdate sdk both are pretty nice about being hands-off in my opinion yeah i mean they're so similar the, yeah because uh, i used i was able to port because i went back then i was working on uh, uh i was working on voyage rip um and it was we all, all in love 2d and then designs, I, it's okay <laughs> i ported i ported voyage to the play to sdk in about three hours yeah it's... and it was it was so quick because all my assets were already like ready to just go because i was trying to match the style even so yeah even like the c stuff it's like porting to sdl was like really like porting like for me at least was like porting like five draw calls or sorry not five draw calls five different api calls which is like you know load image draw image load sound draw sound and then like the button inputs um so it's actually like yeah really not too bad um maybe with some of the lewis stuff it gets a little more because they have some of those nice like animation helpers and things like that that can that can be useful. But I assume yeah. even those, like there's probably some little Lua library that can kind of help you bridge that gap. Um, well, that's <laughs> no wonder I did it. It worked so well for me because I didn't know enough about Lua to do library work and stuff. It's it's ideal that <laughs> I think uh, writing writing your own stuff is kind of underrated. We see that a lot. Yeah, you know, we have a lot. We have a lot of younger devs that kind of come into the Playdate space, which is really awesome. Because um, I think like this creates like a cool environment for them to to like learn and improve in. But a lot of time, I think like we see people like looking for like the perfect library, and it's just like, nah, man, just go write it. It's fine. Mm. And like <laughs> I, I, you know, we worry it's like, oh, mine's gonna suck. And it's like, dude, we all suck. We're just uh, we're just figuring it out. Is the key. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All 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 of the Playdate games that I've made finished and unfinished of are all like 100 percent my code yeah so it's yeah it, it's like for me it's like there's a lot of reasons i also just like i i need to be able to fit all the code in my head personally mm, yeah yeah and, and i'm like if i didn't write it it's really hard for me to do that um so it's like when it's when it's all mine then i'm like i can reason about the code just a lot easier and there's obviously limits to that like i'm not re-implementing the file system layer or something but to to a reasonable degree, I like to have it all be mine. So, uh, yeah. NNN asked, like, what the art on the front screen? This is like the very first. Schmuck so this that we was, tried to uh, make. I don't. You may have come in a little later, but this was the original yeah. version of Gun Trails, and this was a uh, the ago, 2014 whatever version yeah. when we first started. Um, this was in Love 2D. Um, the you know it's funny. The little move. gremlin enemies, like, they look pretty similar to what they are now. A little bit. Uh, oh yeah, it was definitely like I took a lot of the stuff that we did from this and kind of just transposed it into the, the eventual thing of what we did. Because I was like, like I said earlier in the talk, um, when we came up with the octopus boss, like that was just because I had that cool giant space monster kraken. I was just like, oh well, 
this will obviously translate. Just make it a mecha instead of being organic. That's such a nice thing about shmups, like in arcade games in general, right? Is like you don't have to be so thematically consistent, and it's just kind of okay. Yeah, we're just like, what's cool? What's a cool set of enemies for this level? Like within the level, we try to be consistent for gun trails, but it's like the levels themselves are pretty distinct. Like you got like yeah aquatic beasts like on the first one, you've got like forest ones on the second level, and yeah. you've got kind of mole men on the third level. Uh, yeah, it's like very much the mines and stuff, and that that's something consciously I try and do. That was very much a kind of Mega Man inspiration, where it's like yeah, the environment should reflect on the characters. And you're right with most shmups, like it's not always one to one. Like sometimes color palettes, but for the most part, like. A lot of shmups, it's a little bit more ambiguous, but it's all kind of like in that heavy mecha genre, so it works. Um, as long as it's cool, it, it's okay, it's right? Yeah, like that's cool, that's right? kind of the. As long as it's cool, it's okay. Uh, I did think of one thing for Glenn's question, actually, on something. I wish I had added for sure is like. I wish like we could have definitely made save states in the in the first game. Now that I think of it. Um, I really wish we could have had save states to help people practice better and replay modes. Uh, just at the time, man, the code was held together with duct tape. Adding save states, even now, I'm just like, poof, I need to start over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's content it's, for it's HD. one of those webs. Yeah. yeah. That's, no, for that's, sure. That's HD content. Uh, but when the Hori comes around, like, Playdate's not the limiting factor there. That was really just, you know any programmers in the chat can attest like you get to the end of a project especially if it's like the first kind or the first project of that kind for you you know things are a bit messy and so re-architecting is, is just tough um, when you go to build a second version of that system then you can kind of build with all those constraints in mind and do a better job but on the first one you know you're just gonna you're gonna drop a few eggs for sure absolutely yeah, I, I've but, definitely experienced yeah. that in my my uh, play projects. Yeah, Sam, if you haven't seen it, Diora is a 3D's project that really cool like uh, 3D isometric uh, game uh, that looks a little like um oh man, I can't think of the iOS game that it reminds me it's of. It's a, a, a Monument Valley. Mon thank you. Yeah, it's Monument Valley. I'll have to check so, it out. Yeah, they're doing really really cool 3D work. Um, yeah. It's it's very exciting. We're all very excited yes. for Diora. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, Though yeah. that is that is not to pressure you. <laughs> Take your time. Uh, yeah. No, know, it's fine. It's fine. I'm I'm, fine. I'm I'm like almost graduated from college, and I have this plan. It'll be great. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, definitely take your time. Uh, finish if your I, classes, study, and all that. If, Don't be like I, I was. Drink <laughs> three Dr. Peppers right now, Ray. It'll be out tomorrow. Yeah. yeah that's how it works. Just just power yeah. on through. You Don't, got this. Don't do that. Um, I was like, <laughs> I was like abusing Red Bull in college, and that stuff catches up with you. Let me tell no, you. No, man. I actually, I actually don't drink. Um, I don't drink things with caffeine in them. Very. I mean, good. I have Dr Pepper, but not for it's the good. caffeine, yeah. just because it's delicious. Dr Pepper Seriously, is really though, good. Like, Underrated. Take care soda. of yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I'm, I'm you're, trying you're, my best. Your best yeah. work always comes out when you're more relaxed. Stressing <laughs> often leads to. Yes, Toad. Work, stop honestly. drinking Red Bull. Yeah, the um, uh, yeah, there there was there was a like time I like didn't work on it at all for like the entirety of a Christmas break, and I was so mad at myself. Oh man, you gotta, you gotta take those breaks. But yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, because what I'll say is like, you know, like gun trails helped get me out of burnout, but it was like the burnout I was in from working in like big tech jobs. Uh, like that, if you let it build up, that stuff lasts even yeah. longer. So definitely take care of yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, like that's, if, that's... if you let it, if you let it build up, it just it gets so rough. My my plan is to is to work my my software development job, and then I go home and work on my passion projects so that I don't uh, I don't uh, die from having to do not passion projects. Yeah, yeah, man. Just you know, <laughs> pad those Jira estimates. Had those oh, Jira geez. estimates. Oh, that's God. the that's the move. <laughs> what do they say? Take your original estimate, multiply it by two, and add a day or something. Absolutely. Yeah, that yeah. sounds right for art as well. It's always a yeah. little bit longer than you think. Yeah. Um, 
I don't think that's Moore's law, Ray. Sure, why not? We can we can assume that it's Moore's law. <laughs> why not? We can rewrite. Maybe it's you know some other Moore's law. But yeah, Sam's Sam's given away a little. There's like a top down. There's a top down puzzle in uh, in Crash and Burn. Um, that was very much inspired from the original one. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I think we're I think we're getting close to the end. Unless anybody has yeah. any other questions. Uh, do we have uh, any more questions from the chat? Um, anyone have a few more they want to get out before we call it? Speak now or forever hold your peace. We're not adding an extra easy mode. Don't ask me that. Yeah, <laughs> Gun Trails is finished. It was an amazing project. Mm -hmm. We are on to new projects. Yeah, I, I will patch broken things, but I, no, no more, no more. The the loader almost killed me. Uh, <laughs> uh, NNN says extra hard mode when, and that's the funniest thing about Gun Trails is like you've got the average person that plays it. That's like, man, this game's hard. What the hell? And then like the people who hang out in like my section of the Discord are like, man, can we get a harder mode? <laughs> like. And like they mean it. They're not even like joking. Like they actually mean it. <laughs> Wait till the HD version of Gun Trails, whenever that is. Maybe there'll be something more difficult in there. Who knows? You know, Ledbetter, we could actually make like a USB style attachment that you could put a quarter into. And that maybe make it maybe difficult. actually make that work over the serial port. <laughs> This is, but this is a project for a hardware person. I don't, I don't know diddly about hardware, so someone else would have to, someone else would have to make that. But those little levers inside, the coins, like the coin ops, are, are very simple, so you could do it. Quarter a quarter a play, but does the quarter just pop right out, and you just take the same quarter and just put it back in yeah, over? Yeah, put it on the string. You gotta spend real money to get fake quarters, and then you spend the fake quarters. Yeah, next yeah. next gun trails is gonna have V bucks in it. Um, <laughs> each, each V buck costs five real bucks and one V buck is one playthrough. All the quarters you spent. Yeah. Mail it to us. <laughs> we'll unhook the machine. We'll take out the quarters and we'll send it back to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mail me a check and I will mail you a QR code that lets you play it one more time. Um, <laughs> Now, I don't know, just to close off, uh, we all just want to say thanks, man. It's like, yeah, we're, we're really appreciative. It's not the easiest genre to get people into for sure these days. Um, and so I really just appreciate how much people in the Playdate community were like willing to give something a chance that was like so clearly out of like their typical set of interests or their wheelhouse. Like so many people came up and they're like, I don't usually play shmups, but I played your game and I had a good time. And that's cool. Um, and yeah, anyone who's kind of coming back, uh, there's a novice mode now. Uh, please try it. If like if the game was too hard for you before, you might have a better time there. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely on. be playing it with the novice mode because I've yeah. actually never played a a shmup for very long before. So yeah, and and we I'm, have many I'm, people. I'm... <laughs> Uh, Ray and Toad, I think, both got their first clear of the game with novice mode. So it's definitely like enough of yeah. a difference that people were able to kind of get over the hump for sure. Yeah, and Toad got there before Ray. I'm just gonna put that out there. So Toad's number one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Toad did it with a broken playdate, also. What, oh, what's wow. wrong with Toad's playdate? One of their playdates, I think they have two. One of them had like a broken button or something. Oh, um, and so not fair. extra extra points. Yeah, their D pad oh, is wow. busted. So extra Dang. points for Toad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like Josh was saying, uh, really nice to hear from the community. Uh, it's been really positive, especially on the art direction side. Uh, it's been cool to hear so many people like, whoa, this is really neat. Or like, how'd you do that? And I'm just like, ah, I just drew things. Um, so it's been really rad to have such a great response for our first game, both from like the team at Panic and just everybody in the community. Yeah. Adam, did you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, just kind of echoing what you guys said. Um, it was super fun. Um, the reception was really great. This is the first 
I'd sc- like scored other small projects, but this is the first full game soundtrack I did. So just like super cool to even have that opportunity. And then, um, yeah, just to see the reception to the game in general. Even if people didn't like my music, I would, I would be like, that's cool. <laughs> they like the game and they're listening to it. So <laughs> that's good enough for me. Um, but uh, of course, even better that uh, everyone's been super nice about the music as well. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone. It's It's been great. Yeah. And if you guys do a task run of Gun Trails, please show me. I would love to see that. Um, I like, people, I, I people, that's a great idea. Yeah, people were talking about tool assisted speed runs. I want to see that. I want to see the optimal run. Um, I don't really know how Taz's work, but they seem pretty cool. Um, yeah, man. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks to Glenn for for helping run this and, and orienting questions. Yeah. If, thanks for bringing yeah, us on. If if people if you think of anything or just want to chat, we're generally around. You feel free to ask channel ask questions in either the Gun Trails channel or I hang around the Dev General and Dev C channels too. So feel free to pop by. For sure, totally. Um, yeah, just, I, thought, I thought that it was great. We a lot a lot talking about. I just wanted to say to uh, thank you everyone here for giving your time uh it ran i think uh just about uh two and a half almost three hours so thank you for showing so much and sharing so much um i hope everyone had a really good time um and we're looking forward to the future and what other games that you'll develop yeah man thanks everyone for playing and thanks everyone for sticking around this is like two hours yeah. i appreciate y'all that's yeah. crazy yeah, that's great. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I have a, thanks for I need to go drink some water. Yeah, yeah, go drink <laughs> some water. Drink some water. Uh, yeah. Drink Sweet water man. for uh for three D Toad and Ray. Go do your homework. Uh, appreciate y'all. <laughs> 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 All right, later, everybody. See you guys. Have a good Bye. one, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Take it easy. Yeah, see you.